Hello, Michael. What's up? How are you? Everything's pretty good. Everything's good. Everything's good, man. Got no beef, no complaints. Here we good. are. Well, is, uh, after today, we've got six more episodes. Well, and we're having our, you know, favorite guest back, you know, people who really, you know, meant a, a, a big deal to the show and uh, to round things out, to sum things up. It's kind of our, our uh, all-star team is coming back for the last few episodes. This uh, guest is definitely one of them, and he's on the tour with us. Comedy, U.S., comedy U.K., Ireland, Canada. We're going uh, lots of places. We went to Australia. Um we're going to be together in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Borgata, Saturday night. October 30th, Saturday, this Saturday. We're come and see us. Go to the Borgata website, get tickets, come see us. You can ask us whatever you want. We got Joey Cola, great comedian also. Shows a lot, a lot of fun. We, it's been going great. As a matter of fact, Michael, did you know that we sold out the London Palladium, that they added another show on June 10th? That's about 2,500 seats. I know the Beatles played there. Incredible. I know the Sopranos. I think Sinatra I don't know what played that there. Says. Sinatra I think played there. Tom Jones. We're big Tom Jones fans. And it's us, amazing. Boy, have they gone downhill. <laughs> From the Beatles. <laughs> Their best days are behind them, huh? <laughs> um yeah, we will be there. We're going to be in a lot of places. But this week, we're in Atlantic City. Come on Saturday night. Join us. Our next guest was born in the Bronx, grew up in New Rochelle, a stone's throw from where I grew up. Former nightclub owner of the Crazy Horse. Soprano fans have heard that name before. He became friends with Matt and Kevin Dillon, who convinced him to try acting. This, uh, this guest has appeared in close to 200 movies wow. and TV wow. shows. Including Goodfellas, Carlito's Way, The Jerky Boys, True Love, Revolver, Blue Bloods, Shark Tale, Hawaii Five O. He appeared in 25 episodes of The Sopranos. Hold on a second, though, Michael. You left out Booze, Broads, and Blackjack, A Tale of Two Pizzas, uh, Pasquale's. Uh, these are all real. Pasquale's uh, uh, Magic Veal. Hey, 200 movies is a lot. I can't list all of them, but he's been in a lot of them. Uh, he was a real, real, and still is to this day. A, uh, and when you say fan favorite, this is a fan favorite because everybody loves him. Appeared in 25 episodes of The Sopranos as Salvatore Big Pussy Bon Pensiero. Please welcome Vinny Pastor. Hello, Vinny. Oh, How are you? Judy Garland was in the, the Palladium. Oh, yeah? Judy, Judy Garland. Garland too. Yeah, right. yeah. I saw her. At the you saw her where? At the come on. Uh, how are you, Vinny? I'm good. Uh, after I left you guys in Ohio, I went on this journey, and um, I kind of, uh, you know, I went to the Philly. I went to do the movie with Armand, and so I'm a little exhausted. But it's good when you're working. It's good when you're working, right, Michael? Uh, and what's the- I wouldn't know anymore. I'm doing this now. <laughs> You get out of here. And uh, uh, Vinny, what's the name of the movie with Armand Asante? It's Don Q. It's based on Don Quixote, and uh, it's it's very funny. And working with Armand is a trip. He's he's a master of improvisation, a master. You know, really? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I never. Knew I, I like them in the Mambo Kings. Mumbo Kings. I but, like uh, the Mumbo Kings. Yeah, with Antonio Bandatis and Kathy Moriarty. That was I like, I like that movie a lot. He was very good in that. He's a good actor. He's really good to work with. Yeah. But after I left Danny, we're almost Ohio, done. I went to Philly and I did the Gobble Ghoul. You played, you played a Gobble Ghoul. But it's yeah. G-H-O-U-L, like ghoul, like ghost, right? Not a, You didn't yeah, play a ham. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, what did you do? Give, give me like one of your lines. What did you go, uh, boo, what, what do you do? It said Happy Halloween. It's a double ghoul. That's it? Do you have a picture? What? No, I did 30 second spots and 15 seconds. I was three hours in makeup. So what, what did you look like? Um, too bad we didn't have a. You know what? Maybe we have a picture we showed it in, in, in uh, Atlantic City. Long ears, makeup. You know, it was fun. It was fun. I never did something like that. I played a Swiss cheese in a commercial once. You did? Yeah. 
How'd you do that? No, really, Seaman, how'd you do that? You don't look Swiss, though. How'd you do that? Uh, the tour is going great. The people, uh, you know, they love our shows. Uh, the tour has been great. Uh, you're a big part of it. You're great. You did a terrific job. And uh, we're going to keep on chugging down the road. Uh, in the meantime, Vinny, you started acting uh, late in life like I did. Yeah. And you were killed off. You were the first main character, maybe one of the few in TV history that killed you off a series regular. What was your life like after The Sopranos, after it ended? Well, I, I, I kind of got depressed, but then I started getting offers. Um, uh, you know, uh, I went out and did Deuces Wild in L.A. Um, I did Made with Favreau, and John met us on the set. Uh, remember, Michael, when we were doing um, that episode with John Favreau? Yes, and you did Made with Peter Falk, right? And yeah, Peter Falk. I didn't do any scenes with Falk. I did more of my scenes with John. I, I did Serving Sarah. I did a lot of good movies, Hurricane. Um, and then it kind of got quiet for a while. And then uh, things started popping again um, around when I started doing Five O again. And now I've been real busy again. So it's that's that's. But, that's, but Vinny, you know, you were the first guy. Yeah, you were killed off, and it was sad, and it was sad for you, I'm sure. It was horrible, actually. You're out of work. You're not working with all the guys anymore. But you were the first soprano out, so you got all those offers coming in. You did a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, you're right, because you're right. I was the first available soprano from the cast, so I started getting some offers. Right, right. You know, I did a lot of pizza movies. yeah. Very the good. tale of two pizzas. Yeah. Do you still feel? Did did you, did you still feel like a part of the cast even after you were killed off? Yeah, because uh, I was still being invited to all the premieres. Uh, David promised me some ghost cameos, and he came through. Um, I was doing my cameos, and hey, I walked down the street. Little Italy people call me Big Pussy. I mean, that name's gonna stay with me for. Ever. So, yes, I'm part of the cast. Yeah, you know, but the thing, too, Michael, Vinny came on a lot of appearances with us. You know, some guys, you never, you know, after they were gone from the show, they kind of faded away. But, Vinny, you kept coming on appearances to this day, you know. Uh, so that was good. You were always part of the cast. I felt that. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, right, right. Even after Roger uh, was booking me, even after that, Roger Haber was booking me. Yes, you're right. I was still part of the cast, even though I was dead. Right. You remember one time Steven Tyler had a T-shirt on Big Pussy's Not Dead? Pussy is not dead. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was wearing it up in, I think it was Mohegan's son. Yeah, Pussy's he had dead. it made. Big Pussy's Not Dead. Not dead. Yeah, or yeah. was it just Pussy's Not Dead? <laughs> Whatever works for you, Steven. <laughs> uh, Vinny. Uh, now, you told me, and you told Michael, uh, well, you told the audience, after the surprise, after they killed you off, you didn't watch the show for years? Uh, it was hard, yeah. It was hard. And I understand that. It, it would hard. be hard for me, I'll be honest. Yeah. I remember walking down um, um, Washington Boulevard. I just wrapped working with Taya on uh, a scene from that um Pizza with bullets and TMC came up to me. What did you think of the ending last night? You know, the, the, the last ending. And I said, I didn't see it. And the reason why I didn't see it is because I was working. But I really, I mean, I don't know if fans are going to hate me for this, but I wasn't interested. I was, I was going through, I have to tell you, I don't know if you want to be my shrink, Stephen, but I was going through periods of depression when I realized. Listen, Vinny, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not bullshitting. I'm not joking. I could understand that. I you could know? understand that. Yeah. That's a tough blow. I mean, here you are. And then the show is growing every year, you know, getting bigger and bigger. We started making more money and, you know, and, yeah. it, and unfortunately, you know, but listen, you came off the map and you've done 200 fucking movies. I've done way less than that. So you've done pretty well for yourself. Well, you're rich. Uh, you don't need the money. You've had a... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've had a, a, a long career of doing a lot of stuff. Have you seen the final uh, episode yet? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I watched it uh, last week on the reruns and everything when there was, uh, you know, oh, yeah, of course. And I really enjoy it. And I, I get into it more because I kind of try to figure out where David was going with that. But I'm just saying when that week uh, everybody was watching, I was like, I tuned myself out. No, I watch it. I, I can analyze it now. You know? well, what do you think? What are, you, what are your thoughts about the final scene? I think he got killed. You do? Yeah. Um, and I, I think the family got killed. I came to that conclusion two weeks ago when I watched it again. Ah. Um, um, what about the family? Carmela no, and the kids. I, I think they shot him in front of the family the way Frank Vincent got shot. You know, Leotardo. Uh, you know, I just think that's the kind of revenge it would have been. But who knows? Uh, who knows? Who knows? What do you think, yeah, Steve? It's- I think he's alive. I mean, I've said that. I think he's alive. Maybe I just want to think he's alive. Yeah. Alive and well. The family's back together. AJ's doing okay. Meadow's doing okay. I kind of liked it. Here they are enjoying just a regular family night, laughing. That's what I have in my head. I certainly... Yeah, but what about the revenge from Phil Leotardo's crew? Who's you left know? there? Who's even left with the Phil Leotardo crew? Cha-cha. You think Cha Cha did that? The Cha Cha character? Oh, they have two hundred soldiers. That family. Yeah. 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 I I just don't. I think the guy. I think what you saw is what you saw. The guy in the members only jacket was a red herring. That's just my opinion. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying I'm right. No, the fact that people discuss this particular ending more than any ending, you know, on a television show. Food for thought. No, it is food for thought. I I think I agree with you, Vinny. I went back and forth. I originally thought he did. He died. Then I thought nothing. It's what, what you see is what you get. There is no answer. Now I'm kind of thinking, yeah, it's um, because that last season, you really see Tony kind of like the evil that he's kind of cultivated in his life. Come, you know, it, it it's in him. You can't you can't get away from it. Listen. Like they say, karma's a bitch. You know what I mean? You, you, you know what goes around comes around. He did a lot yeah. of bad shit. Yeah, you know, he can't it, deny it, that. There's one guy that knows the answer, and I'm going to ask him again because he's coming on David Chase. I'm not saying he's going to tell me, but he knows the answer, guys. Yeah, well, he knows the. But answer. we asked him that. What did he say? I don't even know what he said. He won't take. Gave me like kind of a really gave me a non-answer. You know, he gave me like. You know, like that. You know, Alan Taylor, who directed the movie, you know, he came out saying he thinks Tony's dead. He don't know any more than we do. That's just his opinion. He doesn't know anything more than we do. Yeah. I tell you what. I got a question. If there was ever um, a prequel, uh, I'm going to ask both of you guys, what do you think would be the storyline? There is a prequel. What do you mean? No, a sequel. A what sequel you, to the prequel or a sequel what, to the show? Listen, I'm not on stage you right now. What comes after? Oh. <laughs> you are on stage with us. What comes after what? The movie or the show? The show. Oh, what comes after? Yeah, if they if they decided to continue the storyline, is that a prequel or a sequel? That would be a sequel. <laughs> this okay. is what I think, guys. This is I think. The show ended in 2007. If like 2009, 2010, right? Yeah. Before we got too old. I'm being serious here. Right. They could have then, like two years later, 2009, did, you know, did a movie that took place right before the pilot, right before the first episode with the ducks and all that. There could have been a movie there. You know, that's what I think. You know, whatever that is, showing how they all got together, how they met, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I think with the same characters before we were all dead. Yeah. You so once, without, how are you going to do that without Jimmy? I said 2009, 2010. Oh, he's still oh, alive, no, right? No, no. You I'm know, once, about all of a sudden they say, let's do one now. But, but, but with our characters are dead. Me, you. Christopher, Pussy, Christopher, Bobby. It's Tony Sirico and Arthur is left. 
And Silvio went into a coma. We don't know what happened to him. You don't know what happened to him. So. I think Meadow becomes the princess. You mean she's going to run the family? Yeah. I think if anybody, Janice would be running the family. Uh, yeah, Janice wouldn't let Meadow do it. That's and it I think we, we sell, I think, what did we say, Michael? Janice wound up with Paulie Walnuts. No, no, no. I don't see that happening. <laughs> no, Artie Bucco, that? maybe. Artie Bucco. <laughs> yeah, ask Johnny when he comes on if, if he had uh, sex with uh, Janice. <laughs> Why do you think people are still so fascinated with this show 15 years after it went off the air? Because it's good. Yeah, that's what I say, too. It's good. I mean, you know, um, it's amazing, you know. Um, like, I, I was in Little Italy for a few days working, and people come up to you, and they say, I just started watching it. I was too young when it came out. Wow, what happens next? It's like you're starting a whole new market of people watching the show again. Kid, younger kids, you know. I was too young. I couldn't watch it then. And they're watching it now. And you, you, so we got a whole new fan base. And you're never going to lose the fans from before. You know, and that's what it is. And I do think because it's that good. The show is that good. It's yeah. kind of brilliant. What other kind of, what other episodic television show could you watch an episode and understand the whole episode without knowing what was happening before and after and totally be entertained, you know? If I turn into, um, uh, you know, like a soap opera, I don't know what's going on, but if I turn into a, a soprano show and I see you playing your, with your trains and dying on your trains or Michael shooting the guy in the foot, I, 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 I kind of get, I get it, I get it, I get it, you know, so these are all, to me, they're all movies within movies, you know, I don't know, what do I know? I think it's, uh, listen, I just think it's, uh, listen, after watching it, we didn't watch it for 20 years, me and Michael, then watching it twice, once for the book and once for the podcast, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think it's absolutely brilliant, every which way, uh, yeah. the acting, the casting, the writing, yeah. And I, I kind of think, you know, that it's not made for movies. I, I hey, you may be right. That. I, think it's, I, I don't think it's a movie. It's always something. People sat home on Sunday nights and they came into our lives every Sunday night. I mean, it was ritual, you know? And I think that's what this show was all about. Every Sunday night they came into our lives. I mean, um, I, I don't think it's uh, ever supposed to be. I mean, I know David's going to hate me. That's okay. He killed me. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't think many saints should. I think it would have been better just for television. I don't know. Well, I think I think many saints as a movie because it's 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 separate from this world, from the series. But, um, I think doing a movie. That would have had the same characters and actors. That might have been rough. I think. I mean, I kind of think many I saints. Trying to do with Sex in the City. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think many yeah, saints stands on its right. own for that reason. There's no actors in many saints from the original show, and I think that was a smart move. No. So that it's it's a, it's it's a movie on its own. I, I mean, I think so. I mean, I see it that way. I mean, that's what. I yeah. gotta go see it. Though. I haven't seen it. I mean, oh, I don't, you they, haven't seen it. No, not yet. Uh, a lot of people said that The Sopranos was like an 86-hour movie. It was, it was shot like a film. Yeah. You know, it was shot. It doesn't look like a TV show. No commercials. You know, uh, and the way it's no, shot. Yet, you know. It shot, it, it, it's shot. It, you know, what, what it did was the type of storytelling people go to the movies for in your living room week after week. You know, the type of kind of content. What you'd go to see, like a, a Scorsese movie or, you know, the Palma or Coppola, great, great filmmakers, you have it in your living room every week. It came from someone who spent their life in television, which is yeah. David. David yeah. spent yeah. his right. entire right. professional right. career in network episodic television. You know, let's not forget that. So, so it is, you know, and, but yet he had the genius and the artistry to elevate the medium itself. It's pretty amazing. It's real when you think about oh, it. Sure. Fitting, yeah. See you, what is your favorite memory of being on the show? So you got one thing stands out? 
Yeah, I've been thinking about it, you know, because we have these discussions on stage. I think my favorite memory was when I was uh, shooting my last scene in the studio. And, you know, we, it was a built-in set, you know, of the interior side of the boat. And the compassion between me, Jimmy, me, Stevie Van Zandt, me, Tony Sirico, because, yeah, because he was going off the show, but their friend, Vinny Pasto, was going off the show. And it was, a, it was emotional three days. And um, uh, Tony Sirico had a fight with Henry over a watch, and little Steven was upset more. And he told me he was upset for days. And Jimmy was upset, and that, and it's because you know I was going off the show, and that that emotion was there, and it also showed in when we filmed Michael. You know, it was there that, that I was leaving. Wow, that that episode is one of the best. Funhouse is just a tremendous yeah. episode, yeah. and yeah. and yeah. your work, your work in that. I mean, in the whole show, and especially those last few episodes. Did you know Stephen Van Zandt before The Sopranos? First time I was a stalker. Uh, Michael, you know, with Bruce and all those guys. I when I had the crazy list, I used to go down to uh, Asbury and try to bring talent back. I uh, I never knew Stevie. And one day I was walking up Ninth Avenue. It was about maybe six months before we started uh, the read throughs. And little Stephen looked at me, and I looked at him. And you know, I said to myself, "Oh, that's little Stephen." Next time I saw him was at the table read, the first first episode. So then we became friends. Well. Oh. You tell know. Michael, tell Michael about the story when you introduced a band in Florida. Uh, he doesn't know the story. You introduced oh, him spring okay. scene, and he was giving you instruction. Yeah. So tell Michael, go ahead. All right, ready? Uh, so CB said, um, "Come down to Florida. We're gonna have a good time." I got down to Florida. Uh, he said, "Come to the sound check." I go to the sound check. And I'm sitting uh, with me and Dion, uh, sitting with talking. And uh, Bruce came up to me and Dion, and he said, Dion, you're doing glory days. And Vinny, I want you to bring us back for the encore. And I want you to do Jackie Gleason. I said, OK, Bruce. So now I'm on the side of the stage. And like a jerk, I'm drinking some wine. And Bono was there. And um, uh, who's the guy who played with Andy Lennox, uh, the guitar player, Michael? Dave Stewart. He was there, and they're all going up. And I said, that Bruce forgot about me. So um, uh, uh, Stevie's assistant ran over to me. He says, he's looking for you. He's looking for you. So I, oh, so I go in the back, and we were under this tent. And and uh, and I, and I uh, Bruce sees me. He smiles, and I just start walking on the stage. And like I, I thought he wanted me to go on the stage and introduce the band. And I went on the stage. It was totally dark. And then a microphone came on. And I said, we like to bring back Bruce Springsteen in the E Street bin. And they all ran up there because they weren't set up. They were supposed to be set up. And that was going to be the cue to play the first song. And they ran up there and CB says, you'll never introduce us again. And then you said Bruce didn't talk to you the next few times oh, he saw you. I went to Toronto and Nils came up to me. I was sitting on one of those... Uh, Things that you carried them uh, equipment around. I was sitting backstage, and Nils says, "I hope you're not introducing us tonight." <laughs> <laughs> and you never did it. You never got asked again. No, but when Bruce says "Lie today," he doesn't care because uh, I'm part of that show. He doesn't care if I go out and fool around with him. He was doing Murder Incorporated one night, and I went out there and, and I started pretending I had a machine gun. <laughs> That's weird. He's now, a good guy. Is it true what? that you thought they were killing you off because yes. you were smoking weed at a concert? Yes. <laughs> you <laughs> honestly thought David yes. Chase killed you off the show because a grown 40-something-year-old man was smoking weed? That's what He's not the principal of high school. Then. Well, it's it's not, you know. Me. David's getting rid of you and caught you smoking pot. Who said that, Tony? Sweet. Yeah, he said David's getting rid of you because you want to smoke pot. You say you're smoking pot. That's why you're gonna die. That's why you're gonna get off the show. <laughs> I said, Tony, everybody was smoking pot. Jimmy was smoking pot. Everybody was smoking it was a rock pot. concert. Yeah, exactly. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's a rock concert. Come on. <laughs> no, David didn't. That's not. I mean, I, I 
Don't well, believe Tony that. Sirico, come on, we talk about son of the show. Tony Sirico really wants them bad to me, but sometimes he can be your worst enemy. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, you know. Well, listen. And then another time he said, because we weren't supposed to be doing anything else, Michael. I was running back and forth and working with Danny Aiello on Danny's movie, and we were working late. And I said, I got to go. I got to get into Little Italy. And 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 uh, I don't know who was Henry. Somebody said, "Where are you going? You got another scene." And I said, "Give it to Tony," because I didn't think, you know, this was season one. I said, "Give it That's to Tony." That was a bad move. That could have, <laughs> could have been a reason why I got whacked. I said, that was a bad move. I said, "Give it to Tony." Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, I don't think they appreciated that. But, now, but who the knows? truism, the truism was yeah. the relationship between Tony Soprano. And Big Pussy was so close, and what Big Pussy did to the family, he had to die. Come on. Yeah, no, I know. It was and, not it, the yeah. television. and it we made for that. great, great drama, great television. It was, right. it was, it was huge. People right didn't want to see. Water from my house, oh, I was living in an apartment down there at Water here you on know, City Island. I had the Daily News and the New York Post sitting in my living room watching the final episode because they didn't know the outcome. Nobody knew the final episode. It wasn't in TV Guide or nothing. Remember How'd they I get in your room? living room? I opened the door. What do you mean? <laughs> Did you smoke weed with them? No. <laughs> Stop. I woke, after they left, I smoked weed. Uh, Vinny, so you're doing, you just finished uh, Don Q. Yes. What else is on the horizon? What else? No, I didn't finish Have a cool commercial I didn't out. finish Don Q, Stephen. Are, that, are you still no, teaching right, acting? Wrote, I'm on road more scenes for me. I'm not rapping with that. I'm playing me in that. Oh, I'm, yeah. playing, I'm playing me who has another TV show. And he thinks I'm the guy on that TV show. So it's very funny. You know. Are you uh, teaching? Well, teaching acting? Uh, my last workshop was last a uh, couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to take a break until January because I don't know what's going on with you guys. I don't know. You know. So uh, you teach, uh, let's give it a plug, HP Studios. I teach at HP Studios, along with Maureen Van Zandt, at 120 Bank Street. But when the pandemic came, we went to Zoom. Now, Maureen's going to continue to teach on Zoom with Renegade. That's a theater company with me. But I want to go back to class, and I'm waiting until January, and I'm probably doing like during the week. Yeah, because we get I, a lot of people asking about, like, how to start an acting, where to study, all that kind of stuff. So here's a good, you can study with Vinny Pastor. You want to start? You want to get started? Uh, well, I do. Uh, Michael, come on. You're not hard. I don't want anybody just to come to class. Well, they have to audition, man. right? Don't they audition? No, they don't have to audition. What I say is that you got to be a formal workshop or you got to be at level two. Where does a guy go if they just getting started? The guy is a garbage man. He says, I'd like to try acting. Where do they go to do that? You can go to H3 Studios and take 101. Okay. Yes. Right. Oh, you're not 101. You're 102? I do a workshop. Level two, yeah. I do a workshop. It's only four weeks. I, I, you come in the first week, or you give me a monologue, I see what you can do, then I give you scenes and blah, blah, blah. But what I do now is since I know who you are, I give you your assignment way in advance. Like, okay, you guys are going to work on Country Girl. You guys are going to do View from the Bridge. Blah, blah, blah. And way in advance. And by the time we get to the second class, uh, everybody's in good shape. But um, see, I got Key Lago on back of me. That's a play we were working on uh, in school. And I got my little SAG statue over there. I wish I had a couple of more like you guys. I've only got one. You got Michael, one? you got a couple, don't you? How many you got, Michael? Uh, I had two SAGs, but I gave one of them to John E.V. because... The second he he um the time he was eligible, um he wasn't a regular that last season. So the first time he got it, he wasn't a regular, and the last season he wasn't a reg he wasn't on. So, um, I wound up giving him one. Now that's a fucking friend that he you deserved. A award. There ain't too many uh, people around like that. No, no, yeah, I ain't giving my statue to nobody. But does it say Michael on it or Johnny? I think I gave it to him without the uh, nameplate. Oh, I the have label. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have one. You know that I the first one that we won, right. and uh, right. uh, we have a Webby. You know, we won the Webby, which is the you know the Electronic Media Award. Steve and I won for best TV and film podcast. 
Well, can I tell you something? You guys knocked everybody off the map, including me. <laughs> oh, you you weren't doing a soprano thing. You, your thing was, was called Forget About It. I couldn't yeah, even it wasn't a soprano. It. Nah, forget about it. If, if you, you forget about it. I was trying to type it in. You spelt it all for cocta. I couldn't even find it. Forget about it. Should have called it Big, you, uh, Pussy, Big Pussy's Podcast. It should Did been. you like doing it, the podcast? Well, I, uh, I, I, you guys really, I feel like I'm in uh, witness protection. You ask me all kinds of questions. I well, did your podcast. the show is. The Michael, show I did is the podcast. I don't care. I'll tell the truth. Michael. I, I liked the first year. The second year, I wasn't happy because the guests I was interviewing, I didn't even know who they were. All right. What year was I on? In the first year, yeah. you, Chaz, little Steven, and then I was going to bring Steven on the second year, and they give me... See, I don't want to get in trouble here. I, you know, it's funny. You feel like you're in the witness protection. This show, we bring guests on, and we ask questions. That's what we do. <laughs> Vinny, I love you. And I'll Thank talk you. to you, and I'll see you soon. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. <laughs> I know you want to leave me in Europe. You better not. I'll no, see you I at don't. the Borgata Saturday night. We'll be at the Borgata. Oh, I don't want to I can hitchhike up from there. But don't you guys leave me in Europe. We won't leave you. We'll wow. see you Saturday night. If we didn't Saturday leave you in Australia. Out, all right? See all you right, at the see Borgata. You, you guys are great. Thank you for Thank being, you. having me as always the monkey in the middle. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. Good job. All right. Always, always a, a good laugh with Vinny Pastor. There you go. So far, uh, you think he's dead. Vinny thinks he's dead. Jamie Lynn thinks he's dead. We're gonna, Alan Taylor thinks he's dead. We're gonna ask the. We're gonna ask everybody as they come on this last season. Stevie our, Van Zandt our- won't tell us. Yeah, and Dan wouldn't tell us, no. no. All right, man, let's take a break and get into the episode. Up to Michael before we get into this. You know, when we first met Andy, and I know you said he was sober then. Now he's been on a bit of a fucking drinking problem, you know, but uh, he was such mild. He barely spoke, you know. It's, uh, you know, he didn't say shit. You know, he wouldn't say shit if he had a mouthful. You ever hear that expression? And, no, I never uh, heard it. And Andy, and now he's like a tyrant, he became. He yells at me. He calls me up. He yells at me. He's a very hard worker, though. No, I think it was since the Webby. Is that what it is? Webby Award. I I think so. Because Andy's are, you know, he's he's the, you know, he's not on camera, but he is the third member of this team. He got the Webby like we did. Oh, yeah. He's a Webby. Yeah. He's very good. He's very, very good. You know, and, and, you know, I call him Andy 7-Eleven. He's open 24 hours, seven days a week. You know, I, I, I call Where's the 11 come from? 7-Eleven. You know 7-Elevens? Oh, I thought you said 24-7. Is that what I said? I meant 7-Eleven. But he's open 24 hours a day, seven days oh. a week. I called him the other day to leave a message. It was about three in the morning. You know, I'm up late because I'm fucking buggy. I call him up. Uh, he picks up the phone at 3 a.m. You called him at 3 in the morning? Yeah, but I just called to leave a message. I didn't call him. And he says, I'm fooling around with my wife. Give me 10 minutes. I'll call you back. This fucking guy just works around the clock. But, uh, you know, but uh, you have a problem with him, though. Well, I think he's a little bit of a tyrant, like Scott Rudin. He yells at me. Get your headset. Put your fucking headset on. Put that Bose headset on, goddammit. I mean, he's snapping it. Maybe he treats you differently, but I've noticed a little change. We have a different kind of relationship. You and him? Well, you know, we both, we we kind of actually go to uh, the same counselor to deal with this show. No, no, this show. (laughs) You, basically. By this show, I mean dealing with you. We're kind of like abused spouses, Andy and I. All right, well, I understand that. But I just got to say, and then once you put him on camera, he went fucking, he went out of his mind when he was on camera. 
Well, he's got a lot of fans now. Yeah. And he takes a lot of shit like the rest of us. What do you mean shit? Well, people complain uh, complain about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. They complain. But I got to tell you, he's the hardest working man in podcasts, in the podcast world. 3 a.m. I called him. Yeah. My apologies, That's amazing. My apologies to his wonderful wife. 3 a.m. That's, that's all I, I haven't say. called someone in 3 a.m. in I don't know how long, many years. I was leaving a message. I don't keep my phone on at night, do you? Well, you weren't calling your phone. You were calling his. How do you know what he does with his phone? Well, I Maybe he keeps phone. it on for emergencies. He might have had a heart attack. My phone is shut off at night, but I'm one of the few people. Do you have a landline? No. I have a landline. I'm the only guy in America with a landline? And a flip phone. A flip phone <laughs> and a landline. Do you, do you have a Victrola? <laughs> yeah, I wind it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have rabbit ears on your TV? <laughs> <laughs> really? With the foil? With the foil? Remember With the that? foil, yeah. You got My it. father would say, yeah, the, the left. My father would go crazy. That was his thing. Touch that thing over and over and over and over. Drove us crazy. That's when you had one I mean, black and white TV. Yeah. You live in a super modern high rise, but I bet inside it looks like you could be in, you know, Flatbush 1953, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, great episode. I've got to tell you, uh, all nine of these episodes, the final nine, I mean, look, the whole series, of course, but. Final nine is although this long. episode is not a you know was criticized by a lot of people, a lot of fans. This episode, the next episode is chasing it, which is this is season seven, episode three. The next one's chasing it, season seven, episode four. A lot of people felt these two were kind of a lull. Uh, really? There was a lot of stuff that built up in season six and at the beginning of this season, and this was kind of like a lull. Uh, apparently, around this time was a dip in ratings. Which I didn't know. Really? Yeah. I I thought it was a really good episode. I, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Either. You know, but I don't think the ratings were ever. Uh, first of all, I, I don't know if the ratings are ever. The, the, the Accurate. Way that, yeah, I don't believe so. But you got to remember, with The Sopranos, a lot of people didn't have HBO. And they were watching 20 people, 15 people, 10 people. You know, a lot of the people were watching it uh, together as a party on a Sunday. Sure, sure, you sure. You know, so I don't think they, they don't, the, the ratings, the Nielsen ratings don't say there was 20 people in the apartment or in the house, you know? I mean, so I don't think they got the real numbers, you know? That's very possible. So who knows? You know, you know how it is. They love to kind of turn on you. So yeah. any opportunity they had to turn on this show, they would do, oh, this episode was boring. This should have been, there should have been more action or there should have been this or should have been that. I think it's a great episode. It's, you know, some fantastic performances from Dominic Chianese, uh, from uh, Jim Gandolfini and Tony Sirico. It's, oh, um, yeah. Uh, it is the American way. They build you up and tear you down. Yeah, when you're an unknown... And you kind of burst on the scene. They love that. Love it. Love it. Love you know, it, right? You know, this guy, <laughs> this show came out of nowhere. This actor, this ball player, the underdog. Right. You know what I mean? He's great. Right. Da, da, da. And then they, they, uh, you know, a perfect example was Jeremy Lin. Remember Lin Sanity? Lin Sanity came out of nowhere. Came was like out of for, nowhere. for like a month was like a on fire superstar, ridiculous, uh, you know, racking up ridiculous amounts of points every game. It was crazy. And then. And then they fucking start beating you up in the press. They start beating you up. Not an NBA guy. And now the guy's out of the NBA. Amazing. You know, I mean, you know, but, but this is what they do. They did it with Britney Spears. We could go on and on. Taylor Swift just. Just people, you know, they're all over them. They were great. They're the greatest ever. And then then the backlash begins, right? You know, it just Lena Dunham. They did it with her. Backlash begins. Ball players, actors, singers. Podcast so, hosts. There you go. I mean, really, the American way. Let's build them up and let's take a shit on them. There you go. So this is called Remember When. Uh, the title refers to, there's a line of dialogue. 
Tony Soprano says, remember when is the lowest form of conversation? A lot of stuff in the past coming up. Willie Overall, Tony's first kill, this bookie that he killed when he was 22. Junior with his memory loss. Tony's harping on this joke that was told, you know, however many years ago. Uh, Beansy brings up these old photos of uh, Paulie Walnuts and Johnny Soprano. There's a lot of that going on. Do you think Remember When is the lowest form of conversation? You know, I, I'll tell you about, Michael. You know, we like to reminisce. We do it on this podcast. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I think if you, I think if that's all you talk about, your glory right. days, high right. school, remember this, remember that, and then it, and it's too much, you hop on it, I think so. But I think yeah. a little of that is good. You get together with someone you haven't seen in a long time. Hey, you know, like you told me, I tell you stories about Vegas days. You told me about the count and you and Johnny and acting school. I think that stuff's fine. Absolutely fine. Right. But when that's the basis of the whole relationship, it's done. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I agree with you. And there's some guys, they don't have anything else. They never moved forward with their life. You know what I mean? This is it. They Listen, people peak early. In life. That's the song, Glory Days. Stephen Van Zant is on that record. Sing, I think he produced it, sings, you know, plays on it. Bruce you Springsteen. Know, you know, people peak early in life. Uh, you know, you see guys like in sports, right? They were this great little league baseball player or soccer player when they were 12. They were the stars of the town or the school or something, yeah. They were, they were the shit. They were the, the, you know, she was the homecoming queen. He was the, uh, you know, the football captain. You know, they got married. Now he's fat and bald. She's missing fucking teeth. You know, and there you go. There you have it. Now it sounds like uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant, <laughs> right? Brenda and Eddie were the popular steadies and the king and queen of the prom. Right? There we go. It's the truth. Hey, I saw a girl who in my neighborhood, she was hot shit, like in the 70s. You know, good looking, tough Italian girl, blah, blah, blah. I'm not making this up. I saw her 15 years ago in Bay Ridge. She had no teeth. She had no teeth. She was in a, like a bodega. She had no teeth. And she mm. used to be the shit, cocky and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what happened. Something happened along the way. Life. Things happen. Things happen. happen. Yeah. This is written by Terry Winter, 16, number 16 out of his 19, and it was directed by Phil Abraham. It's his first and only episode. Phil was a, a started out as a camera operator, then a director of photography. We had him on the show. He was a guest here, and this was his first and only episode directing. Does a great job. Listen, I love the episode. I think Phil did a great job, Phil Abraham. I think he did a really good job. In yeah, no, 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 really good. It's a very good episode. And uh, he's excellent. directed a lot since then. Now he's uh, he's directed a lot of episodic TV. So we start out the Soprano bedroom. Tony wakes up, he washes his face in the bathroom, looks out the window. Paulie is walking up the driveway with the newspaper. Tony kind of looks like, first, what is he doing here? And he kind of so laughs a little bit. He kind of yeah. chuckles. Uh, Paulie's got that great blue leisure suit, warm-up suit, track suit, and he's, uh, Tony kind of smiles. It's a good place to start the episode because we, you know, later on in the episode, he gets sick of him. I think so he's he happy kinda, to see him, yeah. He's, he's happy, happy to see him. He's yeah. got a smile on his face. Soprano Kitchen, Carmelo and Paulie are talking in the kitchen. Tony comes down. He, Paulie wants uh, espresso. She's trying to uh, screw around. The espresso machine's not working. She says, is regular coffee okay? Uh, he said, don't worry about it, you know? And he gives uh, Tony the paper. Tony had said... Few episodes back, he wasn't going to get the paper anymore. That's too dangerous. The, that's where the FBI, yeah. you know, anything could happen. Soprano, Carmela brings up something about the realtor. Tony doesn't seem interested. Good luck, he says. He's not really paying attention. He's uh, this is you drink been, espresso. You drink espresso, right? Yeah, I like espresso. Yeah, you know, I I, I don't drink sambuca anymore like I used to, but I used to. Uh, I still have an espresso now and then at work. A double espresso, you know, just a little pick me up. I had them a lot in Italy. You know, they serve them really short yeah. in Italy, really short. And if just, they did that here, people would complain probably. Well, they're, they're not that big. If you get a single here, they're not that big either. To be but honest. there, it's half the size. 
And then I drink Manhattan Special, which is espresso soda. You, know, you love that. Yeah. I drink, uh, you know, they have cases for me uh, at work, you know. Uh, Soprano House Backyard, Tony and Paulie. Well, you know, let me ask you something. Uh, Italy, you just got back not long ago. Did they recognize you there a lot? Uh, not not many Italians, no. Maybe it's because I look very different. Uh, some of the tourists did. Um, American and, tourists. And, and, American tourists. And in public, a lot of times I had masks on, you know. Oh, okay. So I don't know. And you had a good time there. Oh yeah, it's the best. Can oh, you see? Can there. you can you see yourself living there someday? I could spend a good part of the year there. I love it there. I'm very comfortable there. And you I speak feel a right little, at home. You speak a little Italian. Uh, not much, but you know, when I'm there, after a couple of days, you know, I start. You know, I can I can get around and. You know, talk to cab drivers and hotel people and restaurant people and stuff like that. Yeah. And restaurant people, anybody speak English in the restaurants? In Rome, a lot of people speak English, yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tony Soprano in the backyard. Tony Paul and Paulie walk outside. Uh, they're talking among the tomato plants. And Paulie gives the bad news. He got a call from his sergeant, Danny. The feds are doing some digging. Willie Overall, the bookie, Labor Day, 1982. That was Tony's first kill. And he was 22 years old or 20, 22 at the time. And, uh, uh, Tony Soprano. Uh, Tony Sirico doing that thing with his finger. Remember your first kill, Willie Overall? Like he really <laughs> makes a point with that gun to illustrate. And, you know, we spoke about how Tony would practice in the mirror. Yes. Uh, at home. Every gesture, every look with his hands, he was very specific, and he does. You know, there's. I read some theories. Not, to, I'm not getting crazy with it, but the fact that Tony's in the tomato patch there is a reference to the Godfather, because Don, Don Corleone dies among tomato plants. Yeah, and that this was a foreshadowing of the last episode where some people think Tony died. Okay, that's a stretch. I think. I think it's a big stretch, but then again, uh, like you've said before, it's like a book. You decide for yourself. There's no definitive answer here. Unless we heard it from David Chase, who wrote it. You know, you we could talk about this till the end of time, whether he's yeah. alive or dead. Well, he has an interesting line later on when he says, you know, my my, uh, my tomatoes are just coming in. And he says later on, he goes, everything's finally good in a good place, which I don't really know what that means because it's his life is pretty difficult. But he's like, everything's finally in a good place. My tomatoes are just coming in. Another thing that almost tips off like it's going to end, you know? Well, he's got to leave also. I mean, they got to leave. But, but you know, when I think when he says that everything's in a good place, he doesn't have a gamada. He doesn't have that headache. He's still fucking around, but doesn't have that. You know what I mean? Uh, Junior's in the hospital. He's not a problem anymore. You know, uh, AJ's doing okay. He's got Meadow's the girl, doing okay. Right? You yeah. know, everything's... His family's doing okay. So that's what I think he means. You know, now this. Now this is hanging over their head. You know what I mean? Uh, he says he's here. It's uh, uh, Larry Bird. They go by. You know, they go by. They're watching the FBI dig it up. Now and I found that to be a gilding the lily a bit. That they would go, that they would go there and watch. Places crawling or with FBI. FBI agents, all of whom know who he is. At least I don't know if they know who Paulie is. Yeah, and they're looking. They're assuming, I'm sure, that there's a mob. I mean, they got intel, so they know it's a mob hit. And he's right there, risking them fucking I, seeing him. I agree. I agree with you. There. I mean, the first thing they're gonna do when they see him is think, why is he here watching us? Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Uh, I think TV, that was really that's a TV pushing it. move. A TV move there. It was you a know, TV uh, move. Yeah, uh, they, uh, I have to say. Uh, you know, Paulie says uh, they hear it's Larry Barisi. Larry Barisi, right? Uh, uh, that he's been talking a lot of work for a dead bookie, right? And uh, there's the flashback. Willie overall get shot. They bury him. Uh, uh, Paulie is giving Tony, "Go ahead, go ahead." Uh, that's where he made his bones. Said you were a little shaky, but you did good. I told you that. Uh, you see them throwing dirt on him. 
Uh, they're watching the feds again. You made your bones with that prick. Uh, and he says, eh, there's probably nothing left. He said, there'll be bones, teeth. And now with DNA, obviously, right? DNA, they could yeah. figure and that out. Yeah, and they're there at the crime scene across the street where that's crawling with FBI people. He says, we got to pack <laughs> out toothbrushes. Uh, I don't really know what that even means. They're lambing it to Florida? I mean, where are you lambing? What? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, lambing it, you go to another country. Well, I think they're just, it's going to be hard for them to pin it on them, right? But if they can pin it to the Sopranos, it gives them cause enough to bring Tony in. Yeah. You know, they're not going to, it's not going to be a nationwide manhunt. So they, they don't have that much evidence. Out of sight. It's to take the heat off, out of sight, out of mind. That's my opinion. Carmelo's getting the clothes together. Tony's in the bathroom. She says, I'll call you in a few days. Uh, uh, on the alt uh, alt alternate cell in the emergency, he's called Silla Bobby. Now, Bobby has moved up. Bobby's like right in there with Sil now. Yeah. yeah he's, he's like an right underboss in, almost or something. You know, yeah. he's moved up the ladder. If you need more cash, call me. Uh, I know the drill, Tony. And, and, and she you does know, know the drill. She's, she's going right into that mode, packing for him. She knows what's going on. But she's aggravated know. about it. And she says, he says, you know, it's not like I want a trip to Paris. Gives her a little fucking zinger there. You know, you went to Paris, blah, blah, blah. Now I've got to go do this. Uh, you know, you see Paulie, he's packing. He's got the white shoes that Tony Sirico wears. She oh, says, he's... yeah, this is what our life is still like at our age. And yeah. she's like, when is this going to end? You know, really? We're still, you're on the run. You got to hide, the, you know. You know, uh, uh, she's telling him to wear sunblock. Uh, you know, this is where he says my my tomatoes are coming in. He tells her it's a little gambling charge. He's not going to say it's murder. You know, right. he's, it's a little gambling charge, you know. And Paulie Walnuts, he's got a closet full of white shoes, which Tony Sirico has a closet full of white shoes. He does, that's, yeah. That's that was his Tony thing. Wears. Slip on kind of sneaker shoes. loafer -y kind of things, yeah. He loves those. Yeah, that's... Where do, you, where do you even buy them? Oh, they got them. He, I mean, he used to buy his stuff where he lived out in Brooklyn. Yeah. Bensonhurst. Yeah, a place was called The Garage. I don't know if it's still there. The Garage. That was uh, one of those places. You know, there's That's where you buy that. That, that, yeah. that, uh, that kind of stuff. Goomba that, clothes. The Goomba clothes. Yeah. Uh, the Wyckoff Center. Uncle Pat. And Beppe, That's Frank Albanese, who we great. loved, was a great, love really good him. actor. And Beppe is Dom, uh, I forget his name, Joe. Joe he, Pasillo. Yeah, and he's he's uh, he's David's cousin. David's cousin, Beppe. Yeah, he played uh, Beppe. Yeah, uh, he, and he's good. I, I've had scenes with him. He's very capable. He did a good job. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if he acted before, but he's very, very real. Very believable. Yeah. Uh, Pat, it's good to see you. You seem good, Junior. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, fucking incarcerated. Uh, he says, you're not repeating yourself like you were. And uh, uh, Junior says, did you hear from my nephew? I'm still waiting for a, an apology. Tell him. I mean, Junior's going to be a prick down to the end. Uh, down to the end. He says, get me out of here to smell alone. And they come up with a plan. They said, get an outside dentist. We'll meet you there. And we'll get, you know, we'll hustle you out of there. And then he hears dinner in 10 minutes and he's like, uh, enchiladas tonight. So he, in some ways, he doesn't really think he, in some ways, we're not going to see him get out of there. He's uh, entrenched. They give him, they give him uh, an envelope from the electrician's union. So they're still kicking up to him a little bit. Sure. This is his money. Uh -huh. and But he's pissing the money away inside. He's received numerous envelopes. He's just pissing the money away. You like enchiladas? Yes. So There's a place in Santa Barbara, California, uh, called the Rose Cafe. Um, it's a family business, and they make green or red. You can get or a com you can get both, one of each. Delicious homemade tortillas. Enchiladas. It's great when it's done right. That you know, Mexican food when it's done, it's like Italian food. It's kind of simple. Or some of the dishes, at least. But if it's done right, it's the best. But it's often 
you know, done by people who don't know what they're doing. So same with Italian food, you know. Uh, what's one of Tony Sirico's favorite sayings? If somebody's doing good or making money, he's living on Enchilada Street. Enchilada Street. That? Yes, he said that all the there, time. There, 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 Michael, you're on Enchilada Street now. Dip, dip, dip. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It means it means Enchilada, you're doing a lot of easy. Enchilada, they have easy Street. Enchilada Street. That's what the, yeah. I've never heard anyone else say it. Oh, you're living saying. on Enchilada Street. Yeah, da, da, yeah. Uh, word to the wise. He's living on Enchilada Street. Uh, so we're, we're at the, the nursing home. In the cafeteria. That's Ken uh, uh, Leung, who plays Carter. Uh, he's really good. He does an right, right, awesome good. job uh, as this character in this episode. Uh, an excellent performance by and he Ken. And he's worked. He's worked. Very steady. Yeah, he's he's he excellent. Works. He, he's very, and well, he's become uh, Junior's right hand man inside here. He's like he's like his. Uh, but I'm going to tell guy. you, this guy Larry, the one that cries, played by Joseph Adams, steals the fucking show for me. He's great. He is great. If he's this really isn't great, a scene yeah. for one flew over the cuckoo's nest, I don't know what is. Well, I think that was the inspiration for it, of course. Um, there's a, quite of an assortment, uh, <laughs> quite an assortment of characters. There's the Ascot Man, Kevin Keen Murphy. Uh, Joe Rosario is the heavyset guy, plays Gary. He's the one that says, I'll take some sprees. He was yeah. in our acting class. He was one of our students. Oh, really? When uh, when we when we did the class at Studio Dante, Joe studied with us. He's a really good guy and a good actor. Um, Jamil- he's making... It, Jamil is Jamil very good. Is uh is the orderly who they're paying off. He's buying soda and candy for them uh at really high prices, which Junior is going to sell for even higher prices to the inmates or the patients. Uh and uh, they're using buttons as chips. But it doesn't seem like they're backed up by any kind of money. No, they're not backed up. By any. <laughs> uh Red and- buttons are 10. And, and Mila, one of them last red buttons. He's like, what did you say? And Junior gets pissed. Uh, uh, Junior says $60 for, for sodas and candy. He goes, caffeinators and sugars, you know, some of them can't, aren't allowed this shit. Uh, and he says, I already gave you my watch, Junior tells him. This is the guy he gave his watch to. This guy is kind of his inside man watching out that everyone stays out of this room, you know. Uh, and he's fucking Junior. He said, don't count my money. And uh, Junior, uh, you know, is given the, you know, all right, no limit, five card stud, forty dollar buy-in. Uh, we got Coca Colas, things are for sale. Uh, it's very funny. He, he tells jokes. He's telling a bad joke, Junior. Right? Couple. He of tells jokes. a lot of jokes. He's uh, you know, he's kind of having fun. You know, he's back in the action. It means a lot to him. He's kind of running things now. But uh, he's like, today we got Coca Colas. What was I saying? Yeah, he's, none he's of that it, diet shit. It. The real shit. None of that diet the real stuff. Shit. Kit Kats, Snickers. You like Snickers? And spree. You like Snickers? Yeah. What's yeah. a spree? What's a spree? They're little, uh, like, can- little candies. I think they're ch- chewy, kind of sweet candies. You know what? Uh, I think uh, the top, I could be wrong. Andy, check this out. The number one selling candy. In the United States, at least, is Reese's. Reese's. Reese's peanut butter. Yeah. You like them? Yeah. I like them, too. I do. I like yeah. Kit Kats. Nah. Eh. No? You're not, not a Kit crazy Kat? about them. They're, they're okay. Up, like- they're up top, too. Uh, they used to have, what, a $100,000 ball I used to eat when I was a kid? $100,000. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry. Snickers. Everyone, Reese's is number one. Reese's peanut butter yeah. cup. Yeah. Uh, I tell go. you what, they cast this. This is one of those scenes, like the intervention scene. You know, some of these incredible scenes, like the scene where the guys are talking about making cleaver. This is one of those scenes on, on, on that order. They did a great job of casting these group of guys because I believe that they're a bunch of lunatics. Yeah, no, that's a, it's really well done. Um, yeah, they nailed it. 
That's for sure. Uh, Tony Strzok, Tony and Paulie are driving on the highway at night. Paulie, this is nice. A little road trip, you and me. Willie fucking overall after all these years. Remember, uh, we took you, me, Ralphie, and Puss went to Lugas. Peter Lugas, the great steakhouse in Williamsburg. In Williamsburg. So that was their tradition. Uh, they take you out for a steak. After you kill of. someone. After you kill someone. That's a nice That's a nice thing that let's carry on. Incentive. <laughs> hey, you've uh, never been to Peter Lugas, you said, right? I have not, no. I well, probably now you, won't. You will never go now. It's over. No. I probably won't. I've been to the old homestead. Oh, Lucas is better. I think Peter yeah. Lucas is better. You know, That's what they also, say. It's also a good experience, you know. Famous, one of the most famous steakhouses in the world, Peter Lucas. Been there hundred something years, you know. Yeah. You know. He um he says uh, they pat, they're going near Maryland, near D.C., and he's like, Chevy Chase, what the fuck happened to him? It's like. You could see Tony at that point, Jim, uh, Tony gives him a little look. You could see uh, this is getting annoying a little bit. He's starting to get on his nerves. Already. Bit, you know, uh, just, a, he doesn't like to shut up, and he just kind of talks about nothing. There's a sign, hitchhikers may be escape, may be escaped prisoners. Not to pick up hitchhikers. Have you ever hitchhiked? Yeah. Yeah, I guess in the 70s I did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. A couple times. Yeah, a few, numerous times. Where? Yeah, coming home from the beach, I remember, from Manhattan Beach, Rockaway. Yeah, we used to we used to hitchhike coming home from Rockaway, Reese Park. You know, people would pick you up in those days. You know, yeah. now, the, now there's so many fucking lunatics, I, I wouldn't want to get into a stranger's car. You know, I, you know, there's been several times when I was trying to hail a cab where... Fans would pull over and offer to give me rides. Would you get in? Yeah. 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 I've done that several times. Yeah. I. I uh, Have you done that? I've. I've did it. <laughs> my daughter. I was taking my daughter and her friend Sierra when she was little to you know like catechism class. You know, you know, with Catholic church. Yeah. And I could not get a cab. This is before Uber, and a cop car pulled us over. And so where are you guys going? It was uh, the church in Tribeca, near the, kind of near the World Trade Center, uh, off a church. And the cop car, the three of us got in the back seat, and the cops drove us there. Cops drove us to the church, and I said well, to them. Well, I mean, that you can trust. I mean, obviously. I said, this is the know. last time you'll ever. Another guy, it was an empty bus, a varsity, a private bus. He picked me up and drove me home. That's not. I've gotten into cars like yeah. That's car, a little. You know. That's a little odd because I don't want to listen to. I'll be honest. If if the guy's a nice guy, then I gotta listen to this guy for fucking two miles, three miles. You know what I mean? That's a little odd. Yeah. Was he I, alone? One person or like? It's happened you, several times. You don't get that, in a car you know. with like five guys or something. Um, I've never been. That never was presented to me. No. That I would suggest that. I do this at every opportunity now. You just try to save some money. <laughs> save some money. A cab's no, are expensive I, now. I, no, you know, back, I don't really hail cabs that much anymore. I know this is, this is kind of pre-Uber when this was, you know, when you don't have to, you know, you, you, you were hailing cabs. I don't really hail cabs all that much because I use uh, either the subway or um, Lyft or Uber now more. Well, they have a good story to tell. Guess who we picked up? Yeah. Uh, did they I guess you're a taking picture? a risk, right? Well, I, I, you know, listen, I think if it's one guy, you can handle yourself. You, you know the Taekwondo shit. But uh, if it's a know. pack of guys, pack of 20-year-olds, no. I would. I, I probably know. wouldn't do that, no. I don't think they're going to fucking kidnap you, man. Yeah. They might kidnap you. Maybe. Don't call me for no fucking ransom. <laughs> I don't want to put up <laughs> ransom for you. I have Michael Imperioli. If you want to continue your podcast, but pay us the sum of two hundred thousand dollars. I gotta write a check. You wouldn't do it. I'd rather you <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather not do the podcast. You're like, keep him. And then I don't hey, have to do the podcast anymore. Listen, I, I a guy a guy on Twitter, he must be new to the podcast. 
He said, I just, I just uh, started listening to this podcast. Michael Imperio gives incredible insight. Steve Sharippa is no good. He sucks. They need to replace him. Well, you should have fucking told me that a year ago, motherfucker. God damn it. That's, that, that ship is sailed. Did you write back to him? <laughs> no. No, I don't fuck. I blocked him. But that, that ship is sailed, motherfucker. We've been doing this for a year and a half. You want to replace me now? You, where were you when I needed you? Yeah, he should have. He should have <laughs> came on early on. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been uh, getting a hold of me on uh, social media saying, "When the podcast is over, that you should continue alone." <laughs> that we'd like to. Uh, they're telling listen. you that. Now, they're why are they us. telling you that? They're just saying to, just to. Yeah, they're telling me. Yeah, they're saying you know Michael. You know Michael's the better one of you two. He should continue on. Wow, that's hor horrible. You know, so maybe you should. Talking Soprano. Talking Soprano, talking many saints in Newark. Talking I, I don't want to do that. Empire, talking Goodfellas. Talking, I'm not going to do that. You know? I'm not as interested in those things as I am in this show. I don't have enough to say about those things as I did about this show. I mean, what? look, we're the experts on The Sopranos because we Correct. lived it. We were on it. We, You know, we, we, we've... You know, we're, we're, we're a big part of it. I don't have that connection to talking Goodfellas. What are you going to do? Talk about Goodfellas every week? I mean, that would be kind no, of... No, but, but well, all your favorite stuff. You have a lot of knowledge of your favorite things. Uh, your favorite yeah. books, your favorite music, your favorite food. You know, you, you, you're very knowledgeable. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I'm kind of on the surface, you know. Oh, I don't know, but I think you're just... You know what I mean? You're just being self. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm being serious. Self-critical. I don't uh, agree with that. Then he brings up Tony. Brings up the joke. Ralphie made the joke. Who told? Who told Johnny about the joke? And Paulie lies. That's he knows. Point here. Tony knows it was Paulie. He knows. Yeah. By elimination process of elimination, it was fucking Paulie. And Paulie looks out the window like, uh oh, you know. He's fishing. Tony's fishing to find Tony's out. Tony's fishing, and Paulie feels the heat here. Yeah. Poker game. Very funny scene. They're Dominic's cards. awesome in this scene. He's just tremendous. He's he's talking about, he's making jokes. I brought flowers for my wife. You, uh, I guess I got to spread my legs. Don't you have a vase, a vase? It's, uh, <laughs> and they laugh hysterical. This is a good audience. And that guy's crying. What's his name? Your favorite guy is Oh, crying. Joseph like, Adams. Uh, Joseph Adams is... My favorite guy in this fucking episode. Larry. He plays Larry. He cries <laughs> instead of laughing. He's uh, It's funny, but he's crying. Um, I have a flush. No, you don't. You don't have a flush, George. What do you got? He doesn't know what he's got. It's a, The game is just a... I mean, Ju Junior's trying to make it into something exciting, but it's just a... It's a you know... Well, it's, it's trying to be like... It, it, he's trying to make it like the executive game. <laughs> the jokes. Remember when Feech, he was telling jokes, Feech yes. Lamana? Well, Junior's entertaining and, you know, you know, the whole atmosphere of the game is sure hardcore gambling, but to have a good time. You drink. Guys do coke. They drink. They get high. They laugh. It's all part of the thing. Hey, let's go play cards. We'll have a good time. So that's what Junior remembers from when he ran the executive game. Right, uh, and the professor shows up, and he says, "High rollies, high rollers only. Keep walking, professor." And he doesn't like him. The plight Does of Rutgers like slits his wrist in the faculty lounge after he stabbed the dean. Uh, junior said, "Get the fuck out of here!" He pushes him out. You see the old Junior there, and then Junior says, "Why did the blind man say? What did the blind man say when he passed the fish market?" And Larry goes, "I don't know." It's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what, what do we say? It's a friendly game. Uh, Warren comes in the orderly. Uh, what do we What do we say about this? It's a friendly game. Come on, guys, let's wrap it up. Uh, and then Junior insults Warren, who's the orderly. a big fucking yes. guy. Tells him, uh, "I saw your girl at pet therapy. How does she keep her coat so shiny?" Uh, so Junior's in rare form. He's very nasty. He's insulting people. And Brian, the professor, is a fucking stool pigeon. 
He's a snitch. He's a rat. He doesn't like Junior. He likes to play uh, chess, and he's more of an intellectual. He was a professor, obviously, at Rutgers, but he's uh, Junior and him are they don't do not get along. Uh, Junior's room. Junior's watching TV. A Carter comes in. So he's watching cool? Storm. Uh, so, uh, some I think it's called Storm Stores or something like that. Crater. The he's looking at Crater Lake, Oregon now. Ken Kesey wrote the novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest ah. is from that area. Ah, okay. Good one. Interesting, right? Good one. Uh, uh, time, you know, he says, time once, kid. I was a kid, you know. He says, I brought you tea. Junior tries to give him uh Here's your, here's your here's taste. Here's your cut. It's about, <laughs> you know, 10, 15 red buttons. The kid said, no, that's okay. Uh, time was a kid. My old man, he tells him a story. It's a stonemason. Uh, they tried to, uh, he helped to give him a quarter. He said, don't worry about it. The father gets pissed. You don't like to eat. What are you, a millionaire? You don't need the money. You know, uh, and he made him walk 11 miles uh -huh. from Essex Fells back to Newark. And uh, that's where Card is from. I guess it's a wealthy area. And that's now pretty it is. Hard. It wasn't it's a, little, there, it's a little harsh. That's that old world, you know, old world Italians from the old country, man. They, you know, you had to learn the value of a dollar and a day's work and all that. You know, they and, didn't uh, take that shit for granted. Junior, uh, Dominic was a stonemason, as was his father and grandfather. In real life. In real yes, life. He spoke yes. about that. Uh, there's theories that the kid Carter killed his father. That's why he's in the hospital. Because uh, it's, it's a, oh. isn't it a lockdown for criminally insane people or not I, necessarily i don't i didn't think necessarily but it's very possible but i thought he was just in there for anger issues i i didn't know but it's very I don't possible know. i mean i've i've heard that you know some people think that's why he's there his father doesn't come he's got so much rage it comes out later at junior his mother's there and he doesn't you know he, yeah he kind of very possible be. very possible uh uh you know he says my old man gave me a belt in the mouth and then uh, Keith comes in. He says, Warren, the orderly says, I should get my buttons back on account of we were we weren't supposed to be gambling. Tell Warren to go fuck himself. Junior's playing tough guy. He said, can I at least get a Kit Kat? Which is Junior's eating a Kit Kat. You believe this guy? Get the fuck out of here. It's hilarious. It's just uh, hilarious. The whole the whole setup is just is wonderful. And, uh, you know, Junior's just like he was at home. He's in his chair with the blanket up, very comfortable, eating a Kit Kat. Right. There's not that much difference between his life not before and his life difference. there. You know, uh, you know, Carter's got very, he's anger, a lot of pressure that the parents put on him, a lot of anger issues. You he see was him at he, MIT. He was a brilliant kid, you know. He was a, and you a, see a, Junior, you know, smart. You see Junior... Looking at him, when, when Carter fucking starts yelling, Junior's like, whoa, what do we what do we have here? He's never saw this yeah. side of it, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit. It, uh, he you know, he you makes a fuck, note of it. You can fuck kids up too much. You know, you got to push them, but you can't fucking torture them. You'll have a fucked up kid, you know? Because in, in the scheme of things, you know and I know, missing a test, especially when a kid's young and shit like that means nothing. You got a B, you got a C. kid out of 96. You know, you know, you'll drive a kid crazy with that nonsense, you know. Of course. You're shaping his whole life and that pressure, a little much. You tough, know? very tough, yeah, no doubt. You know? uh, Tony's car, uh, they listen to classic rock on the radio. They're listening to Rock On by David Essex, which was a big hit back in the 70s. Uh, a guy named Herbie Flowers plays that uh Baseline, um, which is very distinctive. He also created the baseline for Lou Reed's uh, hit "Walk on the Wild Side." Herbie Flowers, bass player. Do you know him? No, I don't know I don't him. Know. But he's certainly a good player. Uh, uh, Tony wakes Paulie up. Tony, we should, uh, Paulie, we should stop. Where are we, Virginia? Remember that place? The dive with the massage beds, the heaven air. Uh, we met those sixteen-year-old hillbilly hooers. Near the taxi stand. Uh, you want the old days? Let's go there. And it's funny. He says, you know, uh, you know, he mentions 
you know, we'll get a couple of steaks. And, you know, Tony likes that because that's what he did when, when Christopher and him after you shot the bikers. Tony likes that kind of camaraderie, ma- male camaraderie. And the hotel, kind of you know, those kind of cozy kind of places, little place. You have a steak, you have drinks, you know, it's that old. School. Well, you like that too. I do. I do like yeah, that. I like I, it. I, I used to, you know, when we used to go away, uh, you know, me and my wife, you know, I always, she would be getting ready and I would go, I'll meet you down in the hotel bar. And I would have a couple glasses of wine. I'm waiting for her before we go to dinner. I kind of like that, you know, as you're on vacation or whatever, you know, uh, you know, I did because I never did it as a kid. We never went on vacation. My family never, ever went on vacation. Never. Really? Wow. Not one time. So I kind of, you know, I kind of like that to this day. But, you know, but Tony likes that. Let's get room service. We'll bullshit hang in the room. You know, we used to do it too, right? You know, uh, Foxwood. Yeah. And these places, you know, come over, you know. Uh, no, it's fun. He wants they to wanted, have, uh... yeah, They wanted uh, the old motel like the old days. Uh, now, uh, the ex, they pull up and they say, this place, is it new? And the bellman is Lynn uh, Manuel Miranda, you know. Manuel Lynn Miranda, who created Hamilton. That's the bellman in that scene. Yes, it is. Pulitzer uh, Prize, it, three Tonys, three Grammy, Grammys. Brilliant Genius of, of theater, yeah. He, uh, he plays the bellman, a little part there. Um, he, uh, you know, they're expecting this old motel where they had all these good times and they pull up and it's like a you know whatever what is that like, like a, a double a, like a double tree a courtyard i guess on that courtyard or, marriott or something maybe yeah, exactly. a little maybe a little better because they have conferences there that you know it's that kind of hotel a convention hotel uh but you know uh the bellman kind of looks like he's in space i don't know but there used to be. He doesn't home. know what they're talking about. He's been there uh, <laughs> as long as he's been there. It's been a courtyard marriott. I mean, they're talking might have been twenty years ago, right? Oh, 10 years ago. Oh, I, th- I think yeah, you know, at least. You know, I, I remember. Do you remember the uh, place in Montreal that we went to eat uh, Italian food, something yeah. Napoli, and we sat yeah. with the owner. And we had a great time. Yeah, was food great. was great. Place was there for thirty years. So. That was in 2012. So me and Laura went back, I don't know, five years later, six years later, went to Montreal, and I looked up and down for the place, and I couldn't find it. it was and gone. I looked up, and it was gone. It was closed after 30 years. Yeah, that's depressing. It was closed after 30 years, and I it was such a great place. And, and I can't... I, I said, I think it was there, and I think it was there. You know, one of those places. I'm not yeah. sure. You know, uh, they they go to check in. Uh, Mr. Spears. They call themselves Mr. Spears, uh, which is the name Tony used when he switched psychiatrists for Melfi. Yeah, a guy right? walks into a psychiatrist's office. That's that episode early yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, two king rooms one night. Can I have room service? Send up two fifths of Glenn Levitt. That's a lot of booze. They're just going to be there for the night. They're going to get fucked up. They're going to get fucked up in that They're going to get yeah. fucked up. They're going to drink. I mean, they might not finish the two fifths. That's a lot. Is right. Uh, we don't serve. We got the mini, you know, the mini bar. He said, well, they'd send up a couple steaks, wraps and salads only after 11. You could get nachos at Whatever the name of the place At is. Buckingham's is still open. Get some notch. So they go to Buckingham's. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, Tony wants that. You know, we'll sit in the room. We'll eat steaks. We'll fucking drink. We'll pass out. We'll get started again tomorrow. That kind of, you know. And I don't think Tony Sirico has ever eaten nachos in his life. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Tony, this is what he likes. He likes hamburgers. He likes yeah. steaks. steaks. He likes mushy Pasta. macaroni. Mushy. He, li- he don't like al dente. No, he no. had a problem with that in Italy. He didn't like that. He'll send it back, send it back, send it back. Mushy. He wants the macaroni mushy, and he'll say it. Yeah. What is his shit? He wants his French fries crispy. Crispy, crispy fries. Crispy French fries. Yes. That, that's what he eats. He also likes chicken breasts. 
he would have them on the counter. So, like, if I call Tony or Joe Scarpanino, our good friend, would say, hey, let's go out to dinner. Okay, I call Tony. Tony, uh, now this is like 2 o'clock. Tony, we're going to go to dinner tonight. You come with us. Now, nah, now, nah, I'm already uh, defrosting the chicken breast. I got the chicken out. I'm already defrosting it. That's it. So he would never go out. So he, he got the chicken breast from the store, and he would say, get them from the butcher in the back. Tell them they're for Tony. Like they were special chicken breasts. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Nobody like him, man. Nobody like him. Listen, and we talk about Tony a lot. We we talk about his eccentricities, his idiosyncrasies, but we talk about him from a place of love because he's... Oh, absolutely. Uh, I love him a lot, and he's a he's just the best. I he's mean, a, one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. When we talk about him, we are honoring him. Yeah, we don't not... That doesn't go for everybody. It goes for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm honoring <laughs> Tony Sirico. He is... No doubt. Uh, he has brought me a lot of joy and a lot, yes. a lot of laughs. Whether he wanted to or not, he gave me a lot of laughs. A lot of fucking laughs. Uh, Paulie's saying, you know, your dad, boy, him and me, made this trip a thousand times back in the 60s. He had a piece of that dog track, uh, among other things. And, you know, they're reminiscing. I, I was 20 at the time. I'm a kid. Tells the story about getting pulled over by the trooper. Uh, you know, he said, I got a cousin, Barney Fife, and they're laughing. And, you know, Tony likes to hear stories about his dad. He idolizes his dad, without a doubt. You know, he, he talks about his dad. His dad, I don't think, gave him the love. It was tough love. Very dysfunctional family. The mother, the father, the gomadas. Uh, you know, Tony was raised in this. Tony Soprano was, had yeah. no choice. No, his father was the one who gave him the Willie overall hit to do at 22 years old, which is a very kind of fucked up family legacy there. You I know, mean, a, lot pretty... of, a, lot of, a lot of times mobsters don't want their kid to get in the mob. No. And a lot of times they do, but a lot of times they don't want it for their kid. They want something better. Just well, like in the Godfather. it's a dangerous life. Yeah, in the Godfather, it's a dangerous life. It's a hard life. It's a, you know, you can be killed you can go to jail for the rest of your life it's not uh you know you want your kids to have something easy you want your kids to be safe you know a, a lot of people that watch these mob shows and mob movies they think this is a fucking joke they think like mobsters are like you know i get that feeling that they don't think they don't take it as serious as as, as they should you know mobsters are dangerous fucking guys that do bad things yeah. to good people. They don't just hurt themselves. They, this is not a joke. No. I mean, the show is funny at times, of course. We know that. that we've, we play the humor, but it, the reality real, of it. I'm talking yeah, real life gangsters. The reality is not a joke. No, you're right. 100%. Uh, the hotel buffet, Paulie's talking to a salesman. Tony arrives. Uh, and Paulie's just blabbing away. He's We're going to Miami. You know, it's just like yeah. he's really not thinking into this thinking about what it is they're actually fucking doing they're running away from the fbi basically which is very serious you know tony hears that he's like we're supposed to be laying low what you know you're telling the fucking gooby your life story and he, tony and he's getting under his skin all he's he's getting, getting under his under skin i mean i mean he shouldn't be saying this shit you know they, he's they're, aggravating they're... him and he says let me go get some danish and he gets about a dozen danish like he did at Sardi's when he took his mother and the and the, the her friends to the yeah. to go see. Where did they go see? Uh, the Phantom of the Opera or something like that. Yeah, I forget. Producers, yeah. producers, right? And he he uh, he just filled up that whole basket full of Danish. Yeah, for like the road. a dozen, a dozen Danish croissants and stuff. Yeah. Whitecourt Center Junior uh, walks with Carter. Visiting day at the zoo. I guess this is when the patients could have their friends, family come and see them. And he says, don't feed the chadrules. Yeah. Which uh, is slang for like uh, loser, jerk. Fuck up. Uh, you know. It actually means literally uh, chadrule is cucumber in Italian. Don't feed the cucumbers. 
<laughs> yeah. It's like calling someone a banana, you know? Yeah. These yeah, bananas, yeah. you know? Uh, Mr. Strong called his mother arrives. Uh, he introduces Junior. And she's says, uptight around Junior, obviously. She yeah, knows who he I is. think she's uptight, yeah. period. In, in general? This is one of them tiger moms. You know, they call them tiger well, moms. She didn't do a good job tigering mom, this kid. That's for sure. Well, he's a, see, he's a she messed a up tiger kid. Mom. Uh, Andy, what is the definition of a tiger mom? You know, he says, I'll leave you. She said, you know, he, he repeats himself. I'm on new medication. It makes me salivate. He says it twice. <laughs> he says he's a good boy, this one. He's got some letters to answer. Uh, she doesn't want to hear it. She says she she's heard that 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 card has been acting aggressively. She accuses him of being a bully now. You're modeling actions on the wrong people. You know who I mean, this gangster. And he he talks about his time at MIT. You told me to make friends. I mean, obviously the kid has had a rough a rough a rough life. And he oh, says a tiger mom is a strict or demanding mother. Who pushes her child or children to high levels of of, achieve, of of achievement? Andy is a tiger mom when it comes to us. He's a tiger because he he's strict and demanding of me and you. Oh, he's strict, on this yeah. podcast. He's like he's a strict. tiger mom, Andy. That's true. That, <laughs> Andy became a fucking tiger mom. Uh, you you know, uh, Carter says of all you people should know. Not to believe what you read in the papers. All that crap they wrote about daddy. That was the Wall Street Journal. So did did the father, maybe the father's in jail. Could have been, yeah. His, fa his father did some kind of white collar crime, it seemed like. That's what it yeah. seems like, right? You know, that's what it seems like. Uh, the mother's very uppity. You know, he says, hey, you know, I went to MIT. Told me to, to you know, exert myself with friends. And now I did it. And now you don't like the friends. Yeah. Yeah, this been a, this kid's been troubled for a long time, it seems, you know. Uh, hotel in Miami. Tony and Paulie arrived. Silvio calls Tony. It's not good. The feds found the body, a skeleton. They ID'd it as the guy. Try and relax. How's Paulie holding up? And, and Tony says, the jaws are holding him fine. He won't shut the fuck up. I love the guy. Just, you know how he is. And... Silvio agrees. Silvio agrees. Uh, he's making jokes. Now he's holding court, entertaining the bellman. But, you know, Tony's starting to think what a liability this guy could be. Obviously, he might have talked to Johnny Sack. He's telling strangers they're going to Miami. Uh, he's thinking this guy's just not careful. He talks too much. You know, what, you know, and now there's a little bit of pressure on them. They found this body. Uh, they're actually in Hollywood, Florida, the Hollywood Beach Marriott. Uh, Hollywood is uh, near Fort Lauderdale, north of Miami. A lot of people from where I grew up, Mount Vernon, moved to Hollywood, Florida. A lot of my family, my grandmother's brothers and cousins, they actually have or used to have a Mount Vernon day in Hollywood, Florida. Really? Yeah. Is it nice there? Hollywood's nice, yeah. Older. Is it older? Not all the people, all the buildings. Not necessarily. There's some nice houses there. The beach, the beach is, um, there's a boardwalk. There's a lot of restaurants and stores along the beach there. You know, it's a lot, it's a busy beach, uh, Hollywood, Florida. Well, the last thing I want to do is go on vacation to see people from my fucking neighborhood. Personally. And I'm I, sure I they, hear you. And I'm sure they don't want to see me either. No, I guess not. I got it. The guy goes, I got to come here with my fucking family to Florida to see this fat fuck? Is that what I come down here for, spend all this money? I got to run into this fucking pain in the ass? That's what they probably say. That's what they say, yeah. But my it's, grandfather... It's coming. Go. It's coming. My grandfather bought a place there. He never moved there, but he, uh, he had a place in Hollywood. I think he was thinking of it, and then he went down, and he realized it wasn't for him. My, my, uh, you see this shirt I have? Yeah. It says, this is like the poster for West Side Story, but yeah, it says yeah. Upper West Side. So I my like grandfather, the, the my mother's father, that part of the, that branch of the family were the first 
of my ancestors to come to America in the 1890s, and they settled on the Upper West Side about a few blocks from where I live. It's pretty wild. And now I'm living there. Uh, and uh, the uh, is it still there? No, it's right where West Side Story took place. Uh, Which is West, where? Is West that where Lincoln Center is? Yeah. Uh, West 69th, uh, no, it's all the way west between West End and Riverside. Now there are big apartment buildings, but it used to be tenements. It was all Italian, it was Irish. I think there were uh, African Americans there. Uh, that's that's way back. I mean, I'm, we're talking ni- you know 1900s, early 1900s. Um, and his father worked on the subway. His name was. Uh, uh, Giovanni Battista, John the Baptist, that was his name. He was run over by a subway car. He was a cleaner oh. down the tracks. Oh. Run over. My grandfather had like five brothers and sisters, and the mother was left alone. There was no, back then, that was it. They didn't take care of, you know, there was no pension, disability, whatever the hell, you know, you'd get yeah. now from the city. And they had to fend for themselves back in, this was 19... Uh, 1919, wow. when he died. Yeah, and uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. The beginning of West Side Story is an incredible shot overhead. One of the best ever. All of New York City and Yankee Stadium, and this area. Well, I don't live far from there either. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I live you know very close to there, and. Uh, it is all apartment buildings, but it used to be all tenements because there's no tenements at all. They're no, all- now it's called Lincoln Towers, right? That block where my grandfather was. Yeah. But I think it's kind of wild. We're, they came in, I guess, the 1890s and Well, that's not why you circle. moved it. That's not why no, you moved but, you No, but it might be why I always, I've always felt comfortable in this neighborhood. I never lived here till recently, but um, you think subconsciously? now I'm here. Yeah, subconsciously. Well, it's come full circle. I'm back where it all started again. Eventually, maybe I'll really go back, back to uh, to to Rome, where they all well, came from. Don't start working in the subway, whatever you do. I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to see nothing happen, man. I found his death certificate, my great grandfather, and it said "crushed." On oh. I literally said that on the death certificate, crushed by the subway car. I didn't know they were that explicit. Maybe back yeah, then. Yeah, they were. It's their handwritten back then. He died in 1919. Wow, that's a good My story. My grandfather was four, five when he died. And how old was your great grandfather? I guess like 30, you know, 35 or something. Fuck. Maybe younger. Uh, went back to the center. Carter writes an email for Junior. Read it back. He's writing President I don't think Cheney. it's an email. I think it's a regular letter. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was a regular. It was a regular letter they met that they sent in the mail, snail mail. Uh, President Cheney, powerful man, ultra familiar with accidental gunplay. He's writing in the hope that you will intervene in my case. He's uh, referring to February 11, 2006. Dick Cheney shot a Texas lawyer named Harry Whittington uh, with a 21 gauge Prozzi shotgun. They were uh, hunting quail on a ranch in Texas. Um, and the guy actually apologized <laughs> to Dick Cheney for all he had to go through in the wake of this accident. And they were drinking beers while they were uh, hunting. There you go. And there you have it. That so, doesn't mix, right? Guns and booze. Listen, I told you my gun story. I'm a bad gun guy. I don't no longer own guns. I am a bad gun guy. I the shot gun went my- off, right? In your pocket or something? Gun went off in my pocket in an elevator in Hawaii, and and then I shot. Who Look, was in the elevator? No one. Luckily, I just was you. alone. Yeah, luckily I was alone. Did you burn your leg? Did you injure? I burned yourself? my leg, but not bad. But it was a little gun. It was a twenty-two. I did you graze my... your leg? No, or it just was it was a powder wound? It grazed. Powder... Yeah, it grazed. Oh, little. grazed. Yeah, a little bit. And then I had a hole in my jeans. I had blue jeans, and then I shot. Many years later, with a forty-four, I shot a fucking hole the size of a half dollar in my washing machine in Las Vegas. What, what, how did you do that? I didn't have the fucking lock on that got stuck, and I was testing it. I didn't have the, the fucking thing. Boom. 
right in the laundry room. I was alone. And there was nobody there. You know, I, I think I was, I don't even think they were in town. The hall was this big and the washing machine still worked when I sold the house. Big fucking hole. I said, that's it, selling the guns. I sold all the guns. I had four of them. Terrible. Not, not, there's gun people and then there's me. I'm not a gun guy. You're not? I'm definitely not. No. And so the, you know, he writes the, the, the letter. Uh, it's your day off. Uh, it's you. I'll lay off the card games a while. The professor snitched. He's telling him to lay off the card games. The professor snitched to the main doctor. Uh, and Jamil the orderly is having Junior sign pictures of his perp walk uh, that he's going to sell on eBay, which I guess this is a real thing, right? There's mob memorabilia. I'm sure, sure. there is, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, real mob stuff. Sure. Real mobs to sell shit. And, Sammy uh, the Bull sells autographed pictures, probably, right? I, I That I don't know. But uh, that there is a market for that stuff, just like Charles Manson shit. Then people oh, big buy time. his yeah. shit. Sick big time. Sick yeah. mother. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and Junior says, it was a sick world we live in there, you know? Miami restaurant, Tony and Paulie having dinner with Beansy. Play by That's Paul, Paul, uh, Paul Herman, who's my neighbor. I see him like uh, very often in the neighborhood here. He's, uh, he? yeah, I run it. I run into him all the time. He did lives you, a few blocks from me. Did he mention the podcast? He was supposed to no. call me back. He never called me back. He, he was did not come mention on. it. He didn't mention it. He doesn't want to do Nor it. Nor did I. I guess not. And uh, he maybe he may not even know you're involved in it. <laughs> he may not know. I don't know. He's uh Paul was in Goodfellas. He played the, uh, hey, look at this. A Sammy the Bull signed photograph is $240. There you go. There you have That's, that is that more than ours? Oh, sure. A lot. That's more. a lot more. <laughs> um, well, I guess it should be. He's the real thing, and we just kind of pretend to be that. But uh, Paulie played that great part of the Coke dealer in Goodfellas. He says, helicopters, I'll give you helicopters when when uh, Henry Hill's here in helicopters and he plays this uh, Coke dealer. Really great uh, part in Goodfellas. He was very good. Uh, He's Paul. good. He's a good, really good actor. He's a he was very great. good actor. He was great in Entourage and he was great in American Hustle. American and, Hustle. Uh, he yeah. is a really good actor. Really good stuff, uh, Paul. And Europe. he's great as Beansy. It's a great character. He does a wonderful job. Um, these scenes that he's in in this episode in particular, he's excellent. Uh, yeah. BG says, listen, before the girls get here, remember that Cuban guy I was telling you about? He knocks off trucks. Last law was American sanded, sinks, toilets, tubs. I'll give his number. You call him. You know, I've got to tell you something. He is the head of the family. He's still, Tony Soprano Hustling. still makes like a two-bit hustler. He's still. <laughs> he should but, not be on the front lines of this. He should send Paulie, Christopher, Bobby, Sylvia. But I think it's just because that maybe because they were just going to go down there. So he spoke. Still said, "Well, maybe you go talk to Beansy about this possibility." Yeah, but, but in Montreal, he went with Bobby to talk about the uh, what's it the uh, the, the Flexamax the drugs. Whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, pharmaceuticals. He's whatever. still fucking around with this, stealing the wine. He is the head of the family. I don't think the head. I think of, part of it. I think. I don't think Carl Gambino was fucking running around stealing toilet seats. I think Tony Soprano enjoys it. Like you said, the old days, he likes going to have the dinner. The the you know, it's not. He's not like Paul Castellano, who just lived in his mansion, you know, and uh, was driven around to rest. Tony likes kind of still be one of the guys to some degree. Uh, I guess, but he's really putting himself at risk. Beansy, I think it's funny that he brings Beansy uh, Cleaver, Cleaver hats for his family, his <laughs> wife and kids, and Beansy says, "Where's the DVD?" <laughs> uh, he, uh, pictures of uh, he he takes out pictures. Look what I found when I was moving. He takes out a picture of Paulie, which is Tony Sirico in the old days. That's a real. That's a real picture it's of real back picture. then. He went by the name Junior. Junior uh, Sirico. He was. You know, there's people that I run into, not connected to the mob, 
and not even connected to show business, like in a restaurant or a bar, you know, people, older people, and they say, I used to hang out in the village. I knew Junior Sirico. He was on the scene at this club or that club, and he was a scary, tough dude. Yeah, you know? sure. Well, he was part of the nightlife in New York City. Well, Jimmy back in the tells 60s us, and 70s. Our, friend, our mutual friend Jimmy tells us all the time. He's known Tony since he was young. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, he grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, he was Our buddy a, Don LaPellis knew him back then. Back he was, the a, he yeah. was a, lit, a legit tough guy. Legitimately. He was. Uh, and then he shows him a picture of uh, Johnny Soprano with uh, Uncle Junior, Junior in front of Satrials with the Cadillac. Um, and, and that kind of... You see Tony Soprano getting a little affected by that. There's, it touches him to see that picture. Uh, and then Beansy says he's got to go empty his bag in the bathroom, which Paulie, it, bodily functions and stuff, Paulie can't handle. He's he, horrified. Yeah. He skeeves it, yeah. He says, kill me now. The guy got a piss in a bag. Uh, Tony looked up to Paulie when he was young. Uh, Big time. Big yeah. time. Wished, you know, says he wished he was his father at one point. Yeah, we see that a lot. Junior's room. Junior's watching TV. Pat calls. Junior's watching some funky infomercial. He's eating a Kit Kat again. Uh, you put any thought into our plan? Junior says, what plan? Who is this? <laughs> the dentist. Like we said, it's a terrible plan. They're not going to let Junior go to the dentist on his own. Even these if two old guys. Yeah, I mean... It's a terrible play. So That's even if they play. let him go to an outside dentist, you know, they're not, he doesn't go on his own. And But I love that Uncle Pat. Pat is still the loyal soldier for Junior. Yeah. You know, he's willing to go to bat. He's willing to do this. I mean, however bad <laughs> of a plan is, he's willing to try. I love it. He says, you sneak me off. Where, where would I go? Where am I going to live it? A safe house. I don't know. It wasn't thought through, obviously. Uh but you're right, Uncle Pat is still... It's like The Crew. Have you seen that movie, The Crew? Nah, I don't know. It's it's Burt Reynolds, Seymour, our buddy Seymour Cassell, uh -huh. Dan Hedaya, and Richard Dreyfus. They're these ex-wise guys living in like a kind of a shitty apartment in Miami. And I guess they're going to condemn the apartment or something like that. And they get into... They get into trouble again. It's, it's a co outright, flat-out comedy, you know, but it's... Uh, Good. It's good. It's actually really fun. Yeah. Oh, and, um, I see it. Who else is in it? Um, Seymour is great, as is Bert. And, and uh -huh. they're, they're good. As so, the, the four of them are good. Dan and, and the crew. Uh, Dreyfus, too. The crew. Yeah, I like it's Dan. A good, Dan. Dan's a good guy. I like he's Dan. really good in the movie. And Seymour, I think, doesn't speak in the movie or barely speaks. He plays mumbles or something like that. Right? Oh, really? It's, it's, uh, it's worth checking out. Yeah. Uh, Miami restaurant, Tony, Paulie, Beansy, they're eating with the girls. Uh, uh, you know, Paulie, you remember that yokel? I mean, this is the remember when. You know, remember, you know, the feast, mounted off to your cousin, Beansy. He threw a vat of uh, oil from the Zeppeli stand out. Are these hookers? I'm going to assume um, they're hookers. I hookers, think so. yeah. they're hookers, they're half hookers. Why would they be interested in this story Three old strippers. Men. Maybe they work at the strip club. Maybe they have a strip club down there that they're connected with. I mean, why would like they? That, you know, yeah. this maniac threw a vat of oil from the Zeppelin stand. The, the the girls are listening. Like, do they really care about this? I mean, these are war stories. You know, I mean, who wants to hear about this stuff? They're you know? definitely being taken care of for the night. You know, they're going to get paid whatever they got to do. You know. Sure. Remember at the, the the house down the shore with the bed bugs, the hippie kid mysteriously drowned. I mean, Paulie's basically saying that they killed the guy. Yeah. And Tony is horrified. He's giving him dirty looks. Yeah, he says the hippie kid who mysteriously drowned. I mean, Tony is not fucking happy. When I he mean, is. he's showing off to, in front of the girls. And I guess, I don't know if they like it, but they're young girls, they're young kids. And he's saying too much shit. He's talking too much shit, uh, you know, about, you know, that he shouldn't be saying. And, and and Tony is really taking this in here. Tony, are you okay, Tom? Beans, he says. You're being kind of quiet. And that's what he says. Remember when is the lowest form of conversation. 
He gets up and he dances. It's very awkward. Paulie is like a puppy. When Tony scolds him or says something, and he's like a puppy. Paulie's got his tail between his legs. He he's hurt by that statement. He kind of feels embarrassed and humiliated. Yeah. Well, it does get old. Right? You've been out with guys. They keep talking about that shit. It's like all right already. Fucking move on, no? Huh? Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? You know, I mean, yeah. a little bit, okay, but remember that time we blah blah blah. Remember that time, you know? No, it's nonstop with with Paulie and Tony's had enough of it. New York, we're in a restaurant in New York. That's Echo on Chamber Street. You oh, know yeah? that place. It closed down. It's a good restaurant. Closed they closed? Down. Oh, yeah. I used to live uh, two blocks away. I used to eat there uh, I was very a, a good. lot. Good food, and, and yeah. Their sister restaurant at one point was Campagnola. Oh, really? Yeah, Campagnola. Same owner. Town. It was the same owner, uh, Murray. His name was Murray. I don't know who owns it now, but they bang you over the fucking head over there. At Campagnola. Echo? Campagnola. Oh, Campagnola. Echo not, not wasn't Echo. that bad. No, but Campagnola, and the food is very good. I would assume it still is. I don't know, but get ready to take out a second mortgage because they'll Expensive. bang you. Yeah. yeah. They're going to bang you up, you know. Do you remember we went there with Joey yeah. Pants and some yes. Wall Street guys, and Joey was ordering. Joey bottles. was ordering like five hundred dollar <laughs> bottles of wine because uh, yeah. he knew he was. They were paying the check. Some Wall Street. And they didn't care. They didn't care. We went. We were working, and we got off work early. It was me, you, Joey, and somebody else. Yeah, and we all went. And we all ate, drank. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Joey Pants always a lot of fun to go out with. That's for sure. Uh, uh, Phil eats with Doc. A butcher's Doc Santoro, the by them. played by a uh, real doctor, Doctor Dan Conti. Uh, uh, Doc, Doc grabs food off of Phil's plate, and Phil really doesn't like it. A lot of people. It's a metaphor, that. I guess, what for what's really going on with money and you know the mob. And Phil hates you know Phil yeah. fucking hates Doc. We 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 saw that, um, and that somehow really gets under his skin right there. This DeLeo uh, construction has always been a problem. Tell him I, uh, I'm personally upset. And then he takes the food off the table. That Frank Vincent does a great job. He is uh, Frank is so good uh, in the show. Some Frank of the Vincent. best work he's ever done. Maybe the best. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a restaurant. I went uptown to the Upper East Side, kind of a famous restaurant. And the owner came by and... I was with my wife, and we had a dish of galama, uh, you know, in the middle of the table. We were sharing fried galama, and she, she sat down with us, and with her hands, we're eating the galama off the plate. The owner of the restaurant. Swear to God. Ugh. With That's her hands. That's weird, man. That's with weird. With her hands. Eating the galama, talking to us, you know, blah, blah, blah. Swear. That's true. Uh uh, Junior, it wasn't Carlin. Elaine, was it? F Elaine Kaufman from Elaine's. I'm Oscar? gonna, I'm gonna take the fifth. Taking the fifth. I just said <laughs> a restaurant on the Upper East Side. He said a, uh, if a, a restaurant on the Upper East Side with a woman who owns. But I, I, I could mean, also a, be fudging that to throw you off the scent. Oh, it definitely wasn't Lydia Bastiana. She would never do something like that. I, I'm not. Listen, you know, I'm very vocal. I can't be in this game. You know, I'm always. You know what I mean? This no, time, I don't know what you mean. You're Mr. Let it all hang out. Now, suddenly, you're, <laughs> now you're tight-lipped. I mean, what, what's up? Well, Elaine is, has passed away, right? She's, she's no longer with us. Connect the dots. I know I never speak ill of the dead. If you notice, I never talk about anybody. That's who you should be speaking ill of because no, you can't hurt their feelings. You don't talk ill of the dead. I, I talk about people that are alive. They're no fucking good. They're so mean. she's dead. This woman's dead, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you sip from the motherfuck the world mug. It's coming. Are you getting ready? But don't motherfuck the dead. Don't motherfuck the dead. But I'm going to have in the upcoming episodes uh, a preliminary list for you. So, you know, I will have a preliminary list. Is Elaine up. Kaufman dead or not? She is dead, right? Didn't she I, die? I believe she's passed on. Okay. I uh, uh, I met her only once. 
I, I was having dinner there with uh, Vince Curatola, and she sat with us for a bit. She was she was a fun, very fun very host, fun. hostess. That's for sure. I liked her. Very a lot. beloved, very beloved. Elaine uh, is dead. Yes, she she left the restaurant to her workers: George Steinbrenner, Jack Nicholson. Uh, 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 go on and on. It's the who's oh, who. Oh, and the the whole literary community. Woody you know, Allen. Scene. She, yeah, Norman she was Mailer very. And... She was very good to writers, and it was an institution, uh, a famous, famous New York restaurant. And she ate calamari off your plate. I didn't say it was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the squid from outer space that you know. Maybe, Maybe that's what the, the came squid from. squid came down from out of space onto my plate. On Where is that? 81st Street and 1st Avenue, 2nd Dominic Avenue? Dominic Key and AZ hung out there a lot. Used to hang out there, yeah. He lived down the block at one time, yeah. Junior and Carter playing checkers. The professor comes in, checkers, the thinking man's game. Gives them a little fucking jab, sarcastic. He says, you're looking for a smack in the fucking mouth. Uh, you move, perhaps I can reach the chess set. Junior, you know, he tells Junior, you're only, uh, you know, tough when there's an authority figure around. And then Junior just goes off, beats up the professor, kicks him in the balls, knees him. Uh, His Carter's slipper yelling. goes flying. That's hilarious. Carter's Junior's yelling. Slipper. Kill him, yeah. kill him. I'm going to kill this prick. They're pulling him off of me, Junior. You know, yeah, Junior. Junior's a nasty fuck. Uh, and he always has been, obviously. We, uh, another little Elaine story. Um, when James Gandolfini was doing Gods of Carnage on Broadway, Jack Nicholson went to see the play and went backstage uh, to say hi to Jim and asked if Jim was hungry, and they went to Elaine's for dinner. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew that. And I think also, you know, uh, who's the guy that does the actor's studio? James, James Lipton. Very he pompous. passed away. Yeah, very pompous he, fella. He was up for Kupferberg, wasn't he? I think so. Very, yeah. very pompous kind of fella. And uh, Jim did the actor's studio. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a tradition that you go to Elaine's with James Lipton. James Lipton. Afterwards. And uh, Jim Donald Duckton. And didn't go to Lane's with <laughs> He probably met up with us somewhere. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Where the fuck are these knuckleheads? I'll meet with them. And and who was our friend there who supposedly James Lipton, he had the show before James Lipton? Richard Brown? Correct. He Dr. had Richard Brown. He, yeah. he had a, a show a similar, and this is kind of was a duplicate of that show. Richard Brown had yeah. been doing it years earlier. Is he still alive? I think so, yeah. I yeah. don't I I'm I haven't been in touch with him. Yeah. I don't yeah. think James Lipton is alive. No. It's not nice saying I think he's alive. I think he's dead. That's really not not a good thing to well, do. I don't but, know. Uh, if I, if I know that's Andy, James Lipton. If I don't know, what can I say? I know. I know. Well, I, you think I, I marked down everyone who's alive and dead? Now, when Elaine ate the calamari off your plate, was she seating that, seated at your table? I, I'm not. I didn't say it was Elaine. I oh, didn't whoever. say it was Elaine. The, the person, that, the person was seated at was seated. She at was my the table. owner of the restaurant. This person, yeah. She came by to say hello, sat down, and got them off of my. Was plate. she a friend of yours? I met before. Was it the first time? We weren't close friends, but you know. James Lipton died yeah, in 2020. All right. There you go. Poor James Lipton. All right, P. James Lipton. Uh, right. uh, Dr. Mandel. Doctor's office. Mr. Soprano was the aggressor. The orderly kind of protects him because he's getting paid off by him. He doesn't want to. Uh, he doesn't want them to get rid of Junior and move him to another hospital because he's making a lot of money. She says that's and a lovely he, watch you're wearing. Uh, she's a snitch too. She's she's like the social worker or something. Yeah, whatever. She's a yeah. snitch. Uh, what is snitch? She's doing her job, I guess. <laughs> you know. And she says we're going. And uh, Doctor Mandel says we're going to change his meds. That's the, the takeaway there. And uh, they know Jamil 
is involved in this. You know? Yeah. Tony's hotel room, Tony calls Hesh. I need a bridge loan. Now, this it's a little bit of a weird scene because it's setting up the next episode, which they don't normally do so much on the show. I'm wondering, did they go back and shoot this, add this? Was it always there or what, you know? I don't think so. I mean, this is where we realize Tony has a gambling problem. All right. You yeah, think that? Um, hey, listen, it's very possible. Like Jason Minta, David's assistant, had said, they they took scenes from one episode and put them in the other. Yes. So it's very right. possible that this was shot in the beginning of that episode and they put it in here to set it up. All right. Chasing it, which is the next episode after yeah. this. You know, Tony needs 200000 as a bridge loan. Hesh is at Katz's Deli, which is a famous deli. On Houston Street and Ludlow Street, it was, I think it started in 1888 uh, on Ludlow and then moved a couple of years later to where it is now. On, it's, it's been 20, there 100 and, $24 for a turkey sandwich. My dad, when I was a kid, used to take me there for sandwiches. For high, we used, I used to get hot dogs when I was a little kid. We used to go to Katz's Deli. It's, it's, um, it's still down there. Right, we that's where right near the Mercury Lounge where my band played in August. It's right over there. I, th I think sell, it's, you think yeah. it's overrated? I think it's overrated. And I think it's a tourist trap. And I don't think it need they've been there forever. Forever, they, yeah. They have to own that building. Twenty four dollars for a turkey sandwich. I mean the prices are incredibly it's incredibly expensive. I, I you know I like Mill Basin Deli in Canarsie, Brooklyn, personally. I feel it's better than that one. I used to love the Second Avenue Deli, which was down in the East Village on Second on Second Avenue. I, and when it was there, I loved that place. What do you, um, pastrami? That, Did you used to? Like I used pastrami? to. I used to get whatever. You know, I used to yeah. love that one. Um, my wife was in the hospital with my when she was uh, my first uh, son was born. Beth Israel over there, which is not far from where the second Avenue deli, I used to always come and bring her food from the second Avenue deli because she was in the hospital for, for a little while with the kid, but Katz's sells, listen to this 15,000 pounds of pastrami a week, okay. 15,000 pounds, 4,000 hot dogs and 8,000 pounds of corned beef every week. A lot of movies, uh, famous scene, uh, Harry Met Sally, Billy Crystal, and and Meg Ryan. Uh, Donnie Brasco was shot there. Contract on Cherry Street, Frank Sinatra movie, yeah. was shot there. I shot On the Run uh, with Johnny V. We shot a scene at Katz's Deli as well. Hey, Andy, do me a favor. Find out how much a pastrami sandwich and a hot dog is there. And I know this kind of food is expensive. And I love it dearly. It's very expensive. You know, it's cured meat. And, you know, there's also a famous one in Montreal. I forget the name of it. There's one in Cleveland. Uh, uh, it's called, uh, I don't know, I just went fucking blank. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Second Avenue Deli was great. I think it's but moved it's still uptown. There. Yeah, it's, it it's, moved uptown. It's not on Second Avenue anymore. No, that was a fantastic place. Um, uh, it, Jerry loved the Second Avenue Deli. It was one of his favorite. Jerry Adler loved the Second Avenue Deli. The chicken soup he loves. Um, there's another place on Second Avenue and Ninth Street that's been there a long time. It's not a. It's not the same type of Jewish deli. It's Ukrainian. It's called Veselka. Oh yeah, yeah it's just yeah, one I of my favorite places in the city. I used to practically live on that food when I lived in that neighborhood. I've been uh, there. Veselka a lot is still time. great. It's yeah. fantastic. Uh, there's not many uh, Jewish delis left. The big ones closed. I think the stage deli the, and, and the, the Carnegie. The Carnegie closed. The stage closed. They, they yeah. closed. It's just, the I Edison, don't know. The Cafe Edison, that was a good place. Then the I, Edison Hotel, that closed. I think people eat healthier now. This stuff is could only eat it so much. But, uh, boy, is it good. I Listen, you're in Brooklyn. Go to the Mill Basin Deli. I'm telling you. When I, when I grew up, High Tulip was a very famous Jewish deli that we all went to. That was High really Tulip. High Tulip, it was called, on 86th Street, uh, under the L. It was really good. Really, really good. Uh, pastrami is $24.95 for a sandwich 
And a hot dog is four bucks. That's not bad for the hot dog. Twenty five bucks for a pastrami sandwich. I mean, you get a lot of meat, but it's still uh, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So you know what you got to do, and you got to be, you got to be. What you got to do is get buy one sandwich and uh, two pieces of bread. You make two sandwiches out of it. That's right. That's a good idea. You know, that's what you're gonna have to do. <laughs> uh, and you know what I like? A uh, Dr. Brown cream soda. You like cream yeah, soda? Yeah, I love it. Cream, cream soda. soda. I like Dr. Brown's cherry. I like their celery, celery soda. That's a good yeah. one too. Yeah. I like it, yeah. I, I like the, the cream soda. Uh, Tony, I need a bridge loan, 200 grand. He says, yeah, no problem. Hash and he doesn't says, blink an eye, 200 grand. He says, uh, uh, you know, I need a, you know, uh, and he starts telling him about, I almost won, and I don't, blah, 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 blah. I came in second, he missed a field goal. Nobody gives a shit about your gambling losses. No one wants to hear or your wins. Nobody cares. Yeah, but they certainly don't care about, you know, your I losses, came this no. close and da 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 da. You know, I mean, uh, I came in second. The horse won by a nose. I mean, there's nothing yeah. more boring. Nobody you know? cares. Uh, you know what I mean? The Yankees lost in the ninth inning. Uh, so uh, the girl comes up. Uh, the girl from That's the dinner. That's Jenna Rocky, who, who, uh, who's the. Uh, the girl in the in the scene here, and she 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 brings up Paulie Walnuts. She calls him the guy with the white hair thingies, obviously referring to the wings. The wings, the famous wings. And, uh, he says he used to work for my dad, uh, and she goes, "Yeah, he told me." Again, Tony Soprano's like, "What the fuck is this?" Paulie is just blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. You could tell the girl lights up a cigarette. You could tell she's not a smoker. Usually when people don't smoke in life, you could tell they hold it too high up on, too close yeah. to the, to the, you the tip tell. where you put your mouth. Yes. Yeah, you can you tell. You know, I mean, I could, I told you, I could not smoke. I don't know how to smoke. I, I, I couldn't do it. I yeah. wouldn't even know how to hold a cigarette. A cigar, yeah. Even though I don't smoke cigars, I could, you know, I have. I can fake that. I don't like cigars. Do you? No, I don't like to smoke them, but I like the smell of them when they're yeah. burning. Yeah. They Listen, smell I don't, great, but I don't like to smoke them. I don't uh, smoke weed, but it's all over the city. I love the smell of weed. It's everywhere. You should start smoking weed once in a while. I think it would be really good for you. Not for me. Why? <laughs> Why? I, I think it might, you know, it might calm me down, chill you out a little bit. Yeah. Why don't the next episode, you and I, we toke up and get really blazed and do the podcast? And, see and, what what, and what do we call it? Talking Sopranos, uh, high times? What do we call it? Uh, smoking a, Sopranos, we'll call smoking, it. Smoking, a special Talking. episode. Special episode. Yeah. It'll probably be like seven hours long. And we'll take gummies too. Do we, Andy, is, Andy will toke up too. Andy will get stoned. No, no gummies. We'll smoke. Andy's going to smoke. We'll all be stoned and see I, what happens. I, I think Andy has one of the big fucking water bongs he smokes at home. Like A those bong, big, yeah. you know, the big bongs like fucking Cheech and Chong. That's what Andy does. Like Cheech and Chong, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going to be the next episode. Uh, up special, in smoke. Talking Sopranos up in smoke. There you go. There you go. That's what I was gonna say. We need a we need a tagline. So we're yeah. gonna get high, and then we're gonna go through the entire episode. We're gonna go through the entire series in one <laughs> in one episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Junior sleeping with the email from Dick Cheney on his lap. It's not an email. They're letters. Okay, They're Lynn, Lynn, f- Lynn wakes him up. It's these new pills. And Junior sleeping. I got no pep. She says, oh, that'll change. There's a slight adjustment. That's bullshit, isn't it? They kind of want to keep them sedated. Well, you know, my friend was much older than me, an old guy, and went, he's not with us anymore, but he went into a, a place like that, and he was very agitated when he was there. He had Alzheimer's, but he was agitated, and he was very difficult with the staff, sometimes very aggressive, and uh, they gave him stuff just to kind of, they socked him up. Slow him down, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, he says, I'm sleeping all the time. I can't focus. And then Carter comes in, you know, uh, this bullshit, right? They're trying to numb you out. 
because of what you did to the professor. Yeah. Well, he's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Tony and Paulie are meeting these guys down in Miami. Uh, and they come they come in aggressive, right? They pull up in the they, car very aggressive. Well, their deal, they probably said, um, it's me and my guy. And he said, Ramon and Esteban, they're supposed to meet, you know, Tony said it's me and Paulie. Ramon said it'll be me and my guy Esteban, and instead it's them with two more guys outnumbering Tony, which is not, you're not supposed to do that. And they, they pull in deal. aggressive, it's, but they put, they drive up aggressive, they're late. They're Paulie late, gets they're out. They're a little bit trying to be a little intimidating, yeah. Pa Paulie gets out of the car, he's not happy. He said, what you do, bring everyone but Charo? Yeah. That's a real zinger. I worked with Charo. A zinger. You like Charo? You work with Charo. Coochie, coochie. I did like Charo. I liked her a lot. What was her real name? Andy, find out Charo's real name, please. Charo was a uh, uh, actor, comedian, I, I singer, Xavier, dancer. What, what do you mean was? She's still alive? She doesn't work that much, though. I don't know. She still did. She played Vegas. She used to be a big act in Vegas. She was married to Xavier Cougat, the band leader. The band, band leader. That's right. I, I um, did Hollywood Squares with her. I did Hollywood Squares with her. She was very nice. A lot of fun. Yeah, she was She was always fun. Yeah. Coochie Coochie, right? That's Where was why Charo I, from? Columbia, maybe. Now, uh, these guys. Andy, put down the bong and find out where Charo's from. And her real name. Uh, now, Paulie gets out of that car. He ain't scared of these guys no. not for one second. And Tony takes note of that and is impressed by it. That's, He's got you know, no gun. I don't think Paulie has a gun on him. Maybe he does. Once again, Power Tools, Black and Deckers, Makitas, 50 cents on the dollar. You know, and Tony says, we'll send back the truck pool toys, air mattresses. It seems penny ante, doesn't it? Shampoo. He says, yeah. 50 cents on the dollar. Tony says, no, 55%. 60 grand. They want 60 grand. I mean, he wants so, 55. So what's Tony going to make? If they double their money, 60 grand? What are we talking about? Relative pennies. This is what they do, though. This is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, uh, there's a little bit of a standoff. Charo's full name is Maria, Maria Del Rosario Mercedes Pilar Martinez Molina Baeza. It's a lot of names. That's that's why she went to Charo because that name never would have worked in show business. It's too long. Uh, and uh, I'd love to know where she's from. And is she from Spain? I think. Yeah. Spain, maybe, maybe. Uh, Let's find out. And uh, I got you know I got full power tools. I mean, to me, it's you know, we're looking for a long term relationship. To me, it's Penny Annie stuff. I'll be honest. This is something for Benny and Little Carmine. You know. Yeah. Well, the, and then the guy says, you okay, Tio, that which means comment, uncle. He calls him Tio, which is uncle. He calls uh, Paulie, and Paulie, she's from Spain. Yeah, Mercia, Spain. Okay. Uh, Charo, by the way, not Paulie. Um, <laughs> she pinches the guy's cheek and says, he, he, he. This is another thing we're tracking through this episode. He's constantly going, he, 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 yeah. he, he, he. But I got to tell you something. Uh you know, the way he pinches his cheek and does the slap, it's, a, it's condescending. It's a little demeaning, and he's taking a risk by doing that here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that that, that's, that wasn't done in a friendly way. Uh, Junior's room, Jamil and the nurse arrive. Corrado, how you doing today? I'm dying a slow death. That's how I'm doing. Take your meds. Carter just screams in the hallway. Junior throws the meds. He tricks them, thinking he's... Taking the medication. And Carter's getting aggressive out there in the hallway. Uh, Tony and Beansy, they're at Beansy's house. They're talking about Pauly. And, uh, you know, Paul Beansy says, I understand. Beansy's sticking up for him. Tony's telling him he's worried about him. What he's he stand worried, he does up? Say, he, he says he he can have, you know, he, he got out of that car. He was not afraid. He's fearless. But, boy, man, he... He's a kekaron, which is somebody who talks a lot, obviously. Um... He said, uh, "My brought a prostate problem. Don't tell anybody." But then he tells everybody, and it, he says, "It concerns me lately." You know, he says, uh, "You know, Beansy's uh, trying to, you know, reassure Tony." 
that Paulie's okay. He won't snitch. Tony says, was he ever put to the test? Uh, Beansy saying, oh, that'll never happen. He's a stand-up guy. Uh, and he says, this is something. Tony says he's not, he's got no steady income stream. Yeah, I that's interesting. He's got to show legit income, you right. know? You know, he's, he's got vulnerable to, to the feds because of that, you know? And if he gets, you know, his back against the wall, will he snitch? That's the question. He's blabbing an awful lot. Is he going to snitch? Um, he also says things are going great. Like we were talking before about the my tomatoes are finally coming in. Things are going great. It's kind of like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Right. He says, I love you. You know, I love him. You know, he loves you too, Tone. I love him too. But he's really got Tony thinking here. And, and Beansy says know? something interesting too. He says, uh, you know, you're all he's got. You, the guys, and his image. And that's interesting, you know. No wife. The no other kids. guys have a life. Yes, they have outside interests and stuff. And he's he doesn't have anything really. This is it. No wives, no kids, no job. And his image is right. Tony arrives. He walks inside the hotel, comes back, uh, gets a call from Silvio. Him and Bobby got a call. Karen's sister, I guess Bobby's ex-wife's sister, for, uh, works in the courthouse. Uh, uh, Jackie April. Larry Baris told him that uh, Jackie April was responsible for the death of Willie Overall. Which now Tony is off the hook for, which is good news. Um he said that, uh, so it also means that Larry Barese is not so willing to throw Tony under the bus, which is now, good why? news for why Tony do you think as well. That is? Why do you think that is? Just out of the goodness of his heart? He's snitching, but not on Tony? Yeah, maybe he doesn't want to, you know, he's still a bit of an old school guy. Maybe he doesn't want to go all the way into his yeah. ratness. I don't know. And maybe. Tony, Tony breeds a sigh of relief. He's drinking he go, from a mini bar, little bottle. Mini bar. He goes on the balcony and he hears Paulie laughing his ha 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 watching Three's Company. Did you like that show? Yeah. Funny. I did like it. Yeah. Funny I like John Ritter a lot. I met him once and he was wonderful. Nice, nice guy, yeah. You really know the, nice guy. Great guy. Yeah, the guy I that played Larry. The guy that played Larry, remember? I think he was the super or whatever he was. I don't know what he was. No, uh, he was his friend. He was like friend. a swinging single guy. Yes. Well, he he's uh, a, he plays a judge on Blue Bloods. I worked with him last week. Really? He, he plays a judge once in a while. His oh, name's cool. Richard Klein. Richard Klein, yeah. Yeah, once in a while he plays a judge. Nice fella. Uh, Don I like Knotts the, was on that show, too. Great. Legend, yeah. Comedy legend, Don Knotts. Yeah. Mr. Bonnie Furley. Fife, right? Yeah. Mr. Furley. Uh, Suzanne Summers, she got written off for wanting too much money. She overplayed her hand. Oh, really? And then Is she was happened? replaced. Yes. And then Bruce Springsteen, uh, I think his first wife was uh, replaced her. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Forget her name. She replaced her. Uh, that's two references to Three's Company. Barney Fife. Well, I guess that was more Andy Griffith. A Don show. Knotts, Andy yeah. Griffith, yeah. To Don Knotts, you know. Uh, you know who else was on that? Norman Fell. Was, Terry Fell. Uh, was yeah. Mr. Norman Furley, Fell was right? a good actor. They yes. wear the, uh, he would wear the ascot and the smoking jacket, and uh, that was a funny show. A kind of ahead of its time, right? Yeah. You know. He was supposed to be gay, the John Ritter he, character. He pretended to be gay to so they could live in that apartment with two women because the landlord was uptight. Yeah. But he wasn't. Uh, yeah. And what was it? The Regal Beagle was the bar they hung out. The Regal the Beagle. bar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the beach, uh, Tony and Paulie. And Paulie's laughing like a fucking hyena here. <laughs> He's finding it very funny, yes. Yeah. Uh, the Tony and Paulie lie in the chairs on the beach. We're off the hook with the Willie overall thing. This is beautiful. Uh, we should treat ourselves before we leave. Thinking maybe we should do some sport, sport fishing. Yeah, rent a boat, go sport fishing. Marlins right. are out there, yeah. And he's a little reluctant, Paulie. Tony, he's reluctant, yes. 
Tony is thinking, after seeing him laugh like a fool, he's thinking about killing him. Think, seriously thinking about killing him. He's thinking about testing him, I think. Well, I think he's thinking about killing him. They're going to rent the boat, and that's a good way to do it. They say, if you want to kill someone, that's the, that's the way to do it. My friend was a juror on one of those cases. He said, that's the way. Two people Mob went case? on the boat. No, it was a regular case. But two people went on a boat. One don't come back. No well, one's we know around. the history no here. Around. No one's right. around. Of course, the Funhouse episode with when they killed Pussy. This obviously we we know we're going to see a flashback from that. But uh, that's what's going through Paulie's head. You know, he knows that there's a little bit of tension here. You know, uh, and he's scared. Now Paulie doesn't like the fish, but Tony Sirico does. They had a boat, the Three Amigos, Mike Sullivan, Joe Scarpanino, and Tony, called the Three Amigos, and uh, it was Joe's boat, I believe, and Tony would go out fishing a lot, out of Breezy Point, a lot. Breezy, breezy Point, yes. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fisher guy. No. I, I did, I went when I was a kid, but you know, I haven't gone many years. Uh, back to Junior, telling jokes to Carter. Ascot man, my man Larry Joseph Adams. He tell him he's crying. The joke, the joke about a uh, woman <laughs> chicken chicken farming. I raised five hundred five thousand cocks last year. It's uh, jo Joseph Adams playing Larry cries at this. He thinks it's so funny, <laughs> and Junior pees in his pants. Uh, it's horrifying. Junior is yeah. very messed up by that, and Carter sees that, and he's. Just, he, you know, he's also disturbed by it. I think he uh, Carter thinks a little less of him. A little yes. bit. Oh, That's starting my, to happen here. He's yeah. my hero. Pissed in his pants. He can't control himself, you know. Junior forgets the joke. Carter finishes it for him, you know. Doctor's office, Dr. Mandeli meets with Junior. Junior lies. I'm taking my medicine. The doctor uh, knows he's not taking the meds because the medicine is to prevent incontinence. So that's how he knows he's not taking it. Junior says, "Ask Hormel. Hormel is a Hormel is like a meat, uh, a brand of like cold cuts or something like in the supermarket." Yeah, the guy's name is Jamil. He calls him, and he finds out Jamil has been fired. Yeah, Junior's fucked now. This is his and he says to Junior, fuck. "If you don't take your meds, you have to wear diapers." Or we'll transfer you to another facility. And that's the ultimatum that, may, you know, gets to Junior. We're in Junior's room. Warren and Nurse arrive. Time for your medicine. The same drill. What the, where's my iPod? Carter's trying to distract again. And uh, Junior takes his medicine. He kind of gives Take, in. They got he's me. And he gives in. Carter feels betrayed by this. Junior uh, says, and it's like Junior's a sellout. And Junior's watching Ten Thousand Dollar Pyramid on. Uh, now you've TV. been on that show, right? I've been on. I, 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 as a matter of fact, I was on uh, a bunch of times. I did it years ago. Donny Osmond was the host. He's a good guy, Donny Osmond. You know, uh, I used to do it a lot. I told you at the beginning I wasn't making all that much money, so this supplemented. I, they paid good money. I would go out to L.A. They treated me very nice. Now, it's a celebrity version, is it? Or is it the regular version? Well, it's two celebrities, and then you play with two civilians. So you don't win the money. They win the money. Yeah, but they pay you. They pay you a fee for doing they it. They pay yeah. you a fee for doing it, and they fly you out, put you in a hotel, and they treat right. you very nice. And I would go out on, and, and do it. Uh, I would take my daughter with me. She was young at the time and got a kick out of it. They would... Very, very nice. And uh, then I did it here. They brought a new version back, hosted by my pal, Michael Strahan. And I did it with Jamie Lynn. Didn't she, you do it at Radio City or something like that? I did it years ago. Radio, no, I did yeah. Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune oh, at Jeopardy. Radio City. But, but now Jeopardy he, was a celebrity version. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jamie Lynn won the big money. She made it to the circle twice and won the big money. Jamie she's Lynn is, I'm good. Smart, smart. Jamie she's Lynn very is, yeah. she's great. great. I'm good. I'm a good player. Jamie Lynn is great. Wow. And she won the big money, you know, uh, you know, and it was, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's fun to do, you know, you're on the spot though. 
you know, you fuck up, you don't win the money for these people. Yeah, you yeah. feel bad. You gotta, you gotta come through. It's not easy. You know, it, it, it's, it's not. And the clue, one of the clues while uh, Junior's watching this was Telly Savalas. Really? Telly Savalas, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Carter wants action. He, he's disappointed with Junior. You know? Yeah, he says, we got to get the card game going. Junior says, I'm tired. You know, Junior kind of, I think, hands up. He's giving in here, you know? He's Miami, the, the marina. Paulie's worried. They get on the boat. Paulie flashbacks to when they shot pussy and dumped him in the ocean. Tony makes a bad, uh, you know, kind of, you know, inside joke about Chubb Insurance, about Ginny. John, he's making a Ginny Sack joke, yes. Yeah. And now Sebo Play. Sebo Play. That's the name of the boat. You know? Yeah, which means please in French. Carter's, it's, called, it's a play on that, yeah. Carter's room. Junior arrives. Where you been? You didn't come to lunch. Uh, Carter's in bed. He looks very depressed, dejected. Very depressed. He feels betrayed you know? by Junior, that Junior let him down. That's really... You know, the, what are you this. talking to him for? He says, I asked Lynch, the professor, tells him about writing another letter to Cheney. You have a better chance to write it at Hal Burton. Now he says, my father owned Grumman stock. My yeah, grandpa's these are uh, these are like um, what, uh, um, military industrial kind of businesses that make weapons and uh, okay. stuff like my that. Grandpa, I think, yeah. My grandpa said my dad liked character. Grandpa was a lion. Junior, you know, hey, you're very smart, Anthony. He brings him CDs, Hoodie and the Blowfish. Hilarious. You like Hoodie and the Blowfish? That's not your no. kind of music. No, it's Darius not. Rucker. He's a country singer now. Yeah, I'm not saying they're they're bad. It's just not my taste. Yeah. I mean, they're I, obviously they're they're good musicians and everything. It's just not my my uh, my uh, cup of tea. But yeah, uh, I met him at a charity. He's a nice guy. He had a big hit. See, with, it, Darius yeah. Rucker's a nice guy. He he had a big hit with Wagon Wheel, a remake. Of they that. were huge. Hootie and the Blowfish, big oh, yeah. band at one but time. But then yeah. they kind of went away, and then he found country. And yeah. he's done very well in that that world. Uh, the boat, Paulie cooks rigatoni on he's the boat. He's making pasta. He's making sauce and pasta, yeah. They, they could have just went and picked something up to go. That's he a big commitment cook. on the That's boat. That's a big commitment, yeah. Making sauce. He's making rigatoni. Well, it's a whole afternoon, so you figure you got time and stuff, yeah. You know, uh, Tony can't decide if he's going to kill Paulie or not. Paulie cooks. He's out on the deck. Paulie brings out the food. Uh, you know, uh, then he. this is where he tells a joke. It made me think of Jenny Sack. I heard she took an office job. Chubb Insurance. Believe it or not, early on, I did an appearance for Chubb Insurance for the, at their annual picnic. Really? With a bunch of Chubb Insurance people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, once again, he brings up the Jenny Sack joke. Paulie's not laughing. Yeah, he also says, I saw a whale when you were down below deck. I th and I realized it was Ginny. I thought it was Ginny Sack. He's laughing a little bit, heh, 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 but not really. And then he brings it up again about Ralphie, right? He's trying. He's bringing it up. Then he says, hey, no offense. You ever get yourself checked for Tourette's? Because Paulie keeps out with the, <laughs> you know, it, it's like a tick or something. I don't know. People grind their teeth. It's when you're tense. And then he says again, come on. You told John that joke, right? He flat out tells him. He don't ask him. He ain't asking yeah. him. Yeah. He ain't asking him. And he says, it wasn't me. And the boat is really listing it's rocking so like it, it's a weird there's weird camera angles so one side is going high looking down and the other's looking up it's very you know very kind of getting you seasick there but it adds to the tension in the scene definitely tony's looking at the axe hanging he's looking at he lo the knife yeah who would know if he killed paulie who would care but why does he want to kill paulie because he's aggravating him and he doesn't Trust him. It's a little much. I mean, uh, there's not enough there to kill him, obviously. He doesn't kill him, as we see, but it just seems like a big leap. They're back to Junior's place. They're singing. 
Take Me Home, Country Roads, John Denver. You're not a John Denver fan, I assume. No. I like John Denver. I I, I like John Denver. Really? Then he became an actor. He became an actor, John. Yeah, he's got some good yeah. music. I like him even less as an actor. He played, he was in uh, Oh God. It was a big hit. He had a couple of yeah. big hits. Oh God and something else with George Burns. He was... Uh, John Denver was a big star. He was a big star, yeah. Uh, well, you didn't like that movie, Oh God? I don't know if I ever saw it. So then why do you say you don't like him as an actor? I saw him in something else. Guy's got a lot of hits. Take Me Home, Country Road is a big hit. Yeah, I, I'm not denying Rocky that. Rocky Mountain hits. High. That's going to be us next week. We're going to be Rocky <laughs> Mountain High. We're going to get some Colorado... We're going to just shit. smoke fucking giant bombs. I'm going to get the us. the uh, Gorilla Glue, it's called. Yeah, that's a good strain. Oh, really? I don't know. And I'm then you hear the you hear the bubbles. Purple haze? You can hear the bubbles. The bubbles. Purple, uh, we'll get the, yeah. All right. Uh, Junior, they sing. Carter throws a paper. Junior shakes his head. No, Junior's serious. He's into this. There's no fucking around here. Uh, Dominic, we know, is a great singer in real life. He doesn't like the group, you know. Uh, he's disappointed. Come on, Junior. Let's play. No. Uh, and he goes after Junior. He's choking him. And here come the orderlies running in again. Why don't the orderlies just stay in that room? <laughs> they keep on running in. In the meantime, yes, Junior getting the shit knocked out of him. The yeah. professor got the shit knocked out of him. Why don't right. you just stay there? They need better supervision in that hospital. You're absolutely right. I agree. <laughs> uh, they have to run. And Junior gets, he's choking. Be Junior takes a beat in him. Oh, he hits him really bad. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Brutal. Uh, Paulie's house. It's a little bit of a dream. He comes in. He says, uh, you know, Paulie says, well, what does he ask? Something. He yells something out. Is there anything to eat in the house? Yeah, what's for and dinner? And Pussy's whatever. cooking in his kitchen. Uh, and then he says, when it's my time, when my time comes, will I stand up? Paulie I, wakes up from the dream, and then you see him pumping iron. And those basically. are number four on the wingle meter. That's a great wings while he's pumping great iron. Great wings. So Paulie's pumping iron, saying, "I gotta, st I gotta be a stand-up guy. I gotta be a gangster. I gotta be loyal to my capo. I gotta work out and be strong." Uh, Soprano Kitchen. Tony walks downstairs. Paulie sent an espresso machine to the house, and she said, "What's wrong with that man? This thing costs like two thousand dollars." And he kind of, I think, you know, sent this to make up for annoying Tony. He knows he got under Tony's skin. And now he wants to make things right. And uh, he also knows that he made a mistake by telling Johnny Sack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he put no. their crews against each other. He put the Ralphie was in oh. Tony Sperano's crew. He it's caused a, a lot move. of problems. A lot of caused problem. a lot of problem. And he realizes that. And that's why he's saying, I got to kind of, I got to be a stand up guy. I got to be loyal to my crew, my captain. I'm going to work out. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to make things right. Here's a gift. Do you know that he, Ralphie might be alive today if he didn't do that? Sure. Uh, and he says, uh, Carmel says, what's wrong with them? And he says, what's wrong with them? Guys like him allows our whole lifestyle here. Tony takes with two hands. Two hands. We're in New York City. We're in Tribeca here on Church Well, Street. I'm assuming what happened was they shot the scene at Echo, which is uh, Chambers between yeah. Church and West Broadway. And that night, they went and shot on Reed Street at the massage parlor. That's what that was. About. That's why you saw that, because Doc Santoro's characters in both of those scenes, as is Butch. Uh, Doc walks to the car. The driver runs away. He set him up. A little a la Paul Castellano. Uh, he shoots yeah. him. Uh, Butch picks them up and drives away. Uh, you know, uh, Doc Santoro was going to be a big fucking problem. They needed to get rid of him. Cause he problem was too, Phil, yeah. Uh, Greedy. Yeah. Doesn't give a shit. Very selfish. Yeah. You know, really full of himself. Bad, bought a big back room. Paulie, Christmas, Sylvia. They're watching the report. Tony, uh, Paulie is still fucking yapping, telling stories. Maxwell's plum. You know, uh, that was a famous nightclub. 
So, uh, 64th and 1st Avenue. Before it was our a, time. Uh, yeah, opened in 1966. It closed in 1988. Uh, Werner Leroy, whose father, Mervyn Leroy, was the producer of The Wizard of Oz. But Werner, who, who also owned Tavern on the Green at one time. And the Russian Tea Room. And the Russian Tea Room. But it was a very successful uh, restaurant and bar. I believe um, Donald Trump met his first wife, Ivana, at Maxwell's Plum. And you know who was the maitre d' there? Drew. Drew was a, a good friend, Drew Newport. Our friend, Drew Newport, who owns uh, Tribeca Grill and the Nobu. Uh, Nobu. Uh, he also, the bar from Maxwell's Plum is now in Tribeca Grill. That's correct. He had it dismantled in there. Yeah, Drew he, near Parade, he owns Batard. Good man. Batard, good yeah. man. Good, really, uh, one of the best guys. And a good, we love yes, him. and a good restaurant. And he's talking about Joe Namath, three sheets to the wind, staggering like a sailor. Uh, so he, you know, he bets the game. And it's just Tony rolls his fucking eyes. He won't shut up. And Tony knows this is it. I'm stuck with this guy. He knows he's stuck with him. Yes, exactly. That is totally correct. Uh, the um, patients, uh, you know, back to Junior's place. The patients play with dogs. Very pet sad. Therapy. That's a pet therapy. They get to play with dogs. Junior has a cat. Junior's beat up. He's in a wheelchair. He's medicated. He's got this cat on his lap. Kind of reminiscent a little bit of Don Corleone, who had a cat in the original Godfather movie. The music is Sing, 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 played by Benny Goodman, but written by 1936, the great Louis Prima. Oh, did he write that? Yes, he did. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm a big Louis Prima fan. I Me wish too. I, that's one guy, him and Elvis, I would have liked to see. Me too. And Sinatra, you got to see him. I, I, I would have loved to have seen him. He used to play in the lounge sometimes in Vegas, right? At like uh, oh, he always played four in the, lounge. in the morning, right? Louis, like Louis at three Primo in the morning, was, late, late. Louis Primo was a lounge jack. I don't think he ever played in the big room. He was a lounge jack when the lounges were big, and when they the would lounges do was something. Yeah. yeah, you know, twelve, two, four. When the guys got off, Sinatra and those guys, other entertainers, they would go see Louis Prima. He was playing five, six in the morning. Yeah, amazing. I would have loved to have been one of those. I did get to see Keely Smith at the Cafe Carlisle and, and hung out yeah. with her after her show. She's great. I, I, she's awesome. I, lo I, I really loved uh, well, hanging she, out with her. She did a show at the Desert Inn, the old Desert Inn, not that long ago. You know, when I say not that long ago, the late 90s. Sam Butera, who was Louis Prima's cousin, sax right? player. Sax player. His cousin, and his cousin. You know, he... And her did a show, Keely and Sam Butera. It was a big hit. They had a beautiful lounge at the Desert Inn. It was a big hit. Big, big hit. Louis Prima was like a rock star. He's not just like when you think of this type of music, this kind of swing music. Louis Prima is like a rock star on stage. If you haven't, our, our listeners or audience here, go to you, Google Louis Prima, Keely Smith, that old black magic. There's a video of them doing that Great. song. The chemistry and the, you know, they, they kind of had a lot of kind of comedic interplay between the two. And they, they were a married couple. They were very uh, hip for their time. Very hip. And you got to see this video of them performing the song because she has this amazing stage presence, as does he. And it's, uh, it's pretty magical. Check it out. You know, and then when he divorced her, because she was married a bunch of times, he... Met a girl, Gia Malone, and he tried to turn her into a Keely Smith. And they never had quite the success. Not the same impact, no. right? And then Keely, Keely Smith, was... Keely was just just brilliant. Just brilliant. Yeah. Right. Okay, now it's time for the Talk of Sopranos Ask Me Anything segment. Uh, the winner of our AMA best question is Nick from Henderson, Nevada. Uh, Green Valley, they call it. And we're sending Nick a pair of Bose headphones. Nick asks, other than The Sopranos, what project have you done in your careers that you have enjoyed most? Steve? Uh, you know, I really enjoyed, well, there's been numerous, but I really enjoyed The Secret Life of the American Teenager. 
That was a really good show and a really good job, and it kind of put ABC Family on the map with uh, Molly Ringwall and Shailene Woodley, who's now a big star, man. She's as big a star as I did as an come. episode. I played the gynecologist. And you worked with her. Did you work with her? I don't know if you did. Yeah. Shailene. And you did an episode. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. and, and Brenda Hampton, who I love to death. So, so that was right after The Sopranos. I did that for five years then. Your movie. I enjoyed that tremendously. Uh, uh, you know, Hungry Ghosts. Hungry Ghosts. Ghost, I called. really yes. enjoyed you that. You the star of that movie. You directing, and we got to rehearse in your theater, and uh, Angelou uh, Ellis and Nick Sandow. Angelou really, Ellis, yes. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed that. Uh, of course, Blue Bloods now. Shooting on the streets of New York City again. Uh, you know, and when I worked with Clint Eastwood, that was kind of a big deal to me. I'm a Clint fan. Hair after when I did that movie and Matt Damon, I enjoyed that. You know, those were, you know, there, there wasn't, I tell you, except for a handful, I've enjoyed most. Yeah. I've enjoyed most things I've done. Very few have I, haven't I enjoyed, to be honest. Yeah. You know. Um, that's good. It's good that you say that. You know, yeah. that you can say very that. few, uh, not many. You know, a couple that I could say, ah, that bad experience. I wouldn't do that again. But for the most part, you know. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, I think Cabaret Maxime, which came out last year, as an independent movie. Johnny Ventimiglia's in that as you his Arthur Mascarella. You, you were great in that. That was a lot of fun. I just really, uh, we shot that in Lisbon. The director was the third movie we had done with the director, Bruno Delmeida, who's a friend of ours. And it was um, just uh, Nick Sandow was in that. Um, just was a, a world that we created. And it was two months of shooting nights, two months of nights. Like we start would start shooting at five at um, 5 p.m. And we go till 5 a.m. And, and, uh, so you had to sleep in the day. I would go home, have a cup of coffee, and go to sleep till you know one o'clock. That's have tough. breakfast, and I worked every single day, six days a week. It was, it was, but it was. I loved every minute of it. Um, that That's was tough. my favorite. That's tough. Tough. You have to get into the rhythm of that. Yeah, you know? those and hours. I, you know. And you, the yeah. coffee doesn't bother you. You drink coffee, you can sleep. I don't know why I did. No, usually I can't, but for somehow for some reason. For, during that period, I needed to do that. I don't know why. Um, I also took something so I could go to sleep. There you go. Uh, that helped me. Now because I needed to sleep because I was working, now, you know, 12, well, 12 no hours a day. there's no way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to sleep for three hours. You're going to feel and, like shit. It's yeah. going to hurt your performance. And you have to sleep. Yeah. Uh, that, I think I loved more than um, acting in that more than most i mean the sopranos obviously he's saying other than nick says other than the sopranos i loved working on high roller yeah with you I, uh that was fun the story i wasn't story. that big. I, I i it was a lot of fun working with you it was a lot of fun i yeah. wasn't a fan of the director you know that we did it was we got a fun off. movie to shoot uh we were in vegas for a month we were yeah. in nashville for a month um anytime i work with spike lee is great uh particularly um summer sam because uh it was something that that I had worked on as a writer as well, you know. And then you know, the Hungry Ghost as a director, the the novel that I wrote as a writer. That's one of the things I'm most proud of and really enjoyed, uh, although it was very hard. Um, I like the band Zopa that I play with. That's one of the most creatively exciting things that I've been involved in because it's you really just got the three into of the, us. You know, you've really got into the music. Since I moved uh, back, to, moved New back York. to New York, yeah, yeah. We, yeah we're playing a lot. We got a lot of shows. We well, a handful lined up. I guess, but I guess I think there's going to be more. I guess that was something that you really missed. Uh, I miss playing with those guys. You know, yeah. it's not. Uh, I don't do it on my own. I don't go show up with a guitar and play somewhere alone and sing. It's working with uh, Omo Tai and Elijah Amitz and the three of us together is something uh, that I just uh, I think is special and that I love. You know. You know, what's funny, uh, we were talking about John Denver. When I first met Stevie Van Zandt, I said, uh, so Stevie, uh, what do you do? I mean, uh, you know, because Dominic used to bring his guitar, you know, to the set. And yeah. Play it. And I said to Stevie, uh, what do you do? You play the guitar like 
when you're not acting. He said, what do I look like? Fucking John Denver? <laughs> like, he only plays the big things, you know, the real things. You know what I mean? Like you say, some guys are strumming. I don't think Stevie does that, you know? I mean, but he writes songs. I'm sure he does that in his house sometimes. But you know what right? I'm saying. He's, you know, he's the Super Bowl. You know, he's the... Goes out on, but you know, he, he's not a guy just strumming around, you know, and it was very funny at the time. You know what I liked? I enjoyed very much Nicky Deuce. I that took, was fun. It took me seven years to get that movie made. That and, was a lot of fun. Uh, you were nice enough to do it, and, and, and Tony Sirico and Vince and, and Jim, and I got to spend time with all you guys. We hadn't seen each other all in a while, and that was fun. Up in Montreal, one of my favorite cities, and we ate and drank good. And and I, th the movie wasn't exactly what I would have liked, but I thought it came out pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed our live show going to Australia. Yeah, that was really fun. That was a good trip. Comedy and conversation with the Sopranos, which we're touring. I enjoyed that. I tell you, not many things I didn't. Very few that I went. Well, this sucks, and I would never do that. I enjoy voiceovers. I've done a lot of commercials and animated yeah. stuff, as you have, and I like that. And the books, and our new book, you know? I enjoy working book. on the book very much. Woke up this morning, so. Uh, good question, man. All right, thanks for listening. Remember, new episodes are released every Monday. What do we got left, Michael? Six left. Six, Six episodes left. left. Uh, so listen, if you haven't, subscribe to the Tony Sopranos Podcast, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts, Twitter, Instagram, like us on Facebook, merchandise. Listen, this is going. They're going to be no more. This is a finite number here, folks. Limited supply. They'll be collector's items. So if you, you want know, to get them, go to TonySopranos.com or through our YouTube channel. And take a look at Woke Up This Morning, our book. Executive producers Jeff Sussman, our producers Andy Verderam. Our music was composed and performed by Elijah Amaton. You can hear more of Elijah's music and the band Zopa, which Elijah and I play in together by clicking the links at TalkingSopranos.com. Our production crew includes Ty Verderam and Sierra Sharipa. Talking Sopranos is a Pod Jams production. All right, my friend. Six See more to go. Six more to go. See you next week. See you later.